Check, check. Step into the ring! What's up, gamers? Welcome to the Rowan University Smash Virtual Esports Open, brought to you by Bravest Esports. 
We are joined here by the shop. Uh, the shop is bringing you this event. We're going to bring them on in just a minute to get you some information about the services that they provide to your school. So we'll be hearing from them shortly. In the meantime, just a couple of quick announcements. If you have not seen, there is a very large announcement in hashtag announcements. And yes, you need to read all of it. I'm sorry, but your college students, you can handle it. It'll show you where you need to go to figure out how to play a match, who your match is going to be, and in the case of those players that are going to be on stream, it gives you the information on how to hop in here, and it looks like G-Dog has already figured it out. Perfect. So we're just waiting on Janaya at this point. All right, so we've got G-Dog here. I'm going to keep an eye on the help desk channels and whatnot just to make sure that everybody's there. So all of the matches have been called. Make sure that uh, you know who it is you've got to play. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go into a battle arena. Battle arena will look something like this one. It'll have an ID in the upper right hand corner. And you should be able to join that ID even if you have not friended them on the Switch. Welcome. Thank you. So folks, uh, this is Becky from The Shop here to tell you a little bit about the organization that's behind this event. Hey everybody, Becky Foster. I'm the coordinator of the Shop Food Pantry and Resource Center at Rowan University. And I just wanna say thank you all for coming out and supporting us this weekend. Um, all these great game over weekend events that we're having. So I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the shop. If you haven't heard of it, um, we are the food pantry on campus and we don't just have non-perishable foods like a lot of food pantries, but it's set up like a little grocery store. You come in, there's also snacks, toiletries, school supplies, fresh produce, all kinds of great stuff. Um, a lot of fun people usually like to come out with friends shop together that kind of thing um, and we are located in the Rowan Boulevard apartment complex which is called Robo if you're familiar with that uh, we're in the courtyard kind of behind the Rowan Boulevard parking garage um, so that's how people find us and we are there on Monday afternoons and Friday afternoons from noon to 4 p.m. and we would love to see you so again Thanks for being here. Thanks for your support. Um, and good luck in the tournament. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. All right. Uh, so that link that was just shared by 
Owen Raw 55 there. Um, that did not go through, but I will make sure to get that link and put that into the announcements channel of the Discord for all of you who are looking for it. Um, so let me just DM them really quick, and then I'll have that link for you shortly. Still looking for Janaya. If anybody does know Janaya, please let them know that uh, we're waiting for them on stream. If they're having any trouble, feel free to contact us in Help Desk. Still looking for Janaya here. Gotcha. Alrighty. Okay. So we have received word that uh, Ray Ray and Janaya are using the same console. Um, so they're getting that set up at the moment, and uh, they should be in here as soon as they're available. So, while we're waiting, a little bit about Bravest Esports, the organization that is running this event for you. That is uh, Eyes and myself. We are an organization dedicated to promoting esports in small local grassroots communities, wherever we can find them. Um, so we help out at schools and municipalities, you know, parks and rec departments, uh, businesses, anybody who's trying to get a community of players together to play some video games and have some fun, make some friends, maybe push themselves a little bit and learn a little bit more about themselves. Our goal is to make that a reality for as many people as possible. And so we run events, we run leagues, we do content creation. So there will be a platform fighter show that we do on this stream every Thursday. Um, so not only will we play Smash and, uh, you know, Melee Ultimate, uh, but we also will definitely be getting into Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, eyebrows, eyebrows, when that comes out very shortly. That's a couple weeks from now. And uh, maybe mess around with some Slap City, maybe some Brawlhalla, whole bunch of stuff out there for us to go and explore in the world of platform fighters so if you're interested in that that will be a show that's going on Ready? all right here we go we've got a cloud and a mario player here g dog on the cloud and this is janaya on the mario like we said, sharing consoles with Ray Ray here. So that's why the tag is going to be Ray. Let's see how this goes. We're going to Battlefield to start with. Pretty common neutral stage. Cloud using these aerial attacks here to try and zone Mario out. Hits a cross slash. Looks like they have a pretty good understanding of Cloud's neutral game here, based on how they're playing it. You're seeing a lot of the kind of standard options, using that forward air to control space in front of them. 
charging limit when Mario is far away from them. And trying to catch them out with dash attack sometimes. All good options. Charged forward smash, and G-Dog going to be able to punish that here. Issue with just charging a forward smash is that your opponent sees it coming for a pretty long time, and they're going to be able to put together a game plan based on being able to see what you're, what you're telegraphing. Great dash dance away into the dash attack there from Janaya. Unfortunately, recovers a little too high on the stage, leaving them vulnerable while they land, and G-Dog punishes with the back air. I'm really liking the, uh, the dash back movement that we're seeing from Janaya here. Understands kind of weaving in and out of their opponent's range. It's tricky to do against Cloud, though, because he has a very comically large sword. Great coverage from Cloud there. Throwing out the forward air, making Janaya think he's vulnerable, but then throwing out a really quick forward tilt to cover himself. The dash attack doesn't quite do it. Very close to KOing. Tries to edgeguard with the up, he misses. So Naya has a second chance on this stock. It's a nice dash attack. Goes for the up air. Good air dodge through from G-Dog. Ooh, just over the top of that limit. Blade beam and charges a forward smash. G-Dog swings in the wrong direction. Actually surprised that they survived that there. Great trade. You take those every day of the week if you're Janaya. Ooh. Man, she is hanging on for dear life right now. 172% on this stock. But as long as the stocks are even, you've always got a shot. Gets into the forward air, gets hit with the jab in response. Fine with the jabs, not fine with the forward air, though. You know, as long as they're not getting KO'd, they're probably okay, but... The forward air at that point was going to do it. So Janaya finds themselves down about a full stock. Hits a charge forward smash, going for a charge up smash as well. Really trying to just finish this stock. Cause it relatively low percent, so there's some risky options. We'll see if he can punish. Woo! It actually landed on stage, but then upbeat anyway. So left him a little bit vulnerable. Didn't get punished too hard for it. I would like to see Mario throwing some fireballs. I think uh, that would, you know, when G-Dog is willing to give her that much space, that uh, you could definitely take advantage of that. G-Dog is swinging. He sees that this Mario is on life support right now, and that'll do it. The forward smash off the side. G-Dog going to be able to take game one of this set versus Janaya. We got some Komodo hypes in the chat. You love to see it. All right. Oh, man. Are we going for exponential growth here? I think there is a limit at which Nightbot will actually start stopping you from spamming emotes. So I think eight is like the limit, and that's the furthest we're going to be able to go there. I mean, if you're if you're willing to take a timeout for for the sake of science, I guess you could go for the 16. But <laughs> you're, a, you're a braver person than me for that. All right, we've got to switch from Mario to Kirby here. He does have an interesting little bit of punish game. People do tend to like to flock to Kirby for the sake of the recovery. Not actually one of the best recoveries in the game. It's, it's very middling in terms of how high it goes. Uh, but the fact that you can kind of just press jump over and over again uh, is very appealing to players who 
might, you know, accidentally misuse one of their jumps and want a second one for safekeeping. But Kirby also does have some very interesting punish game stuff off of grabs. Um, there is a, a grab into forward air combo. Ooh, uh, gets dunked. It's a massive swing from G-Dog there. Didn't even have to use limit, so he was able to use that to get an extra bunch of percent on Janaya's Kirby here. So, starting off this match with a very... Oh, no! Okay, okay, okay. Calm down, G-Dog. <laughs> that, that's not how that move works. <laughs> Probably going for the, for the suicide uh, pull-down there. It does knock Kirby downward, but it's not going to knock him all the way to the blast zone from that high up. So that actually equalizes things a little bit for Janaya. Unfortunately, that will take it right back. Big forward air. It was a tough situation for Janaya. Shielding with her back to G-Dog. Good patience there from Janaya to make sure that uh, she can get down to center stage without interference. Ooh, that forward air almost took her down again. This time she DIs successfully to the stage to avoid that fate. Just for a grab. She's just jumping around trying to use that limit somewhere. <laughs> A lot of times, uh, in this kind of a position, a Cloud might aim to go for a limit charge so they can get something like a finishing touch out of shield. Um, Got to be really careful of Cloud's bull and blue, blue right that, like that. Eh. The cross slash, though, not going to do the job. For one thing, because it misses, but for another thing, I don't think it has enough uh, KO power. It's more of a damaging tool. That forward tilt will do it for sure. G-Dog has won that match. 2-0. Oh, cool. We did fix the emote limit. Thank you, J-Dog, for being braver. Braver than I will ever be. You have dared to challenge Nightbot, and you have won. All right. So that will conclude that match. That was the best of three, but don't worry. Janaya is not out yet. This is a double elimination bracket. That format means that you need to lose twice before you are knocked out. So, Janaya will still have an opportunity to win the entire tournament. Comeback of a century. For now, though, we're going to see the winner of that match, so G-Dog, play against Koopinator. So... Uh, make a quick announcement there so that they know to come in. Alrighty. So, quick reminder to those of you who have not been in one of our tournaments before. What you'll want to do in order to report your scores so that we can update the bracket for you is go to the score reporting channel of the Discord server. In there is an example of exactly how to report your score. You'll put your at, so your Discord username, uh, in a way that tags you. Put your score, dash, your opponent's score, and then your opponent's at, your opponent's username. Using that format, it's very easy for us to tell who had which score. It also informs your opponent that the score has been reported so that they can double check and make sure that that score has been reported accurately. And then as soon as that is up to date in the challenge bracket, our TO eyes here will give that a thumbs up to let you know that that match should be recorded in the bracket. Um, sometimes you need to refresh to be able to see it. So if you see that it has been recorded, but it's not showing on your end, just hit that refresh button and you should be fine.
So many Komodo hypes. This is one of the, just numerically, based on the number of Komodo hypes that we see here, this is just one of the hypest chats that we've ever had for one of these events. I don't know if I've ever seen more Pog Champs. All right. You love to see all the score reports too. It looks like people are definitely figuring out how that system works. Nice and quick. Knew we could trust you guys. You're college students. You know what you're doing. All right. All right, got a whole bunch of matches getting called in announcements, so make sure you're keeping an eye on that to ensure that you're not missing anything. We got G-Dog in here waiting on Koopinator. Just checking the chats to see if they need any help. If you do ever require any assistance with getting the bracket put together, if you have any questions, there is a channel in the Discord called Help Desk. And that is a desk where we will help you. It's not an actual desk. And who has desks anymore? You know, that's so, that's so 2019. Furniture. Psh. How quaint. Chat, you're, you're, you're hearing my keyboard, right? Rate right the sound mic at my uh, my switches here. What do y'all think? Is, is this a pleasing sounding keyboard? Just gonna, just gonna give you an earful of it real quick. You like? Ten out of ten. There we go. That's what we strive for here. Thank you, Luigi Three. And there's Koopinator. Perfect. Alrighty. So let's get our scoreboard set up for that. This is going to be winner's round two. So this match should be accurately represented in terms of the labeling on Challenge. Uh, Challenge is very silly about the way it names some of its matches. Uh, what you will see referred to on Challenge as semifinals is actually what we would call winner's finals. Winner's round four on Challenge is actually winner's semifinals. So that should give you a little bit more of an idea of what I'm talking about when I refer to a match. Here we go, getting started. We've got a Joker for Koopinator here. Let's see how well they know this character. G-Dog opening up pretty strong. Joker is sitting now with Arsene. So they'll do a bit of extra damage. And uh, a lot of the time, the game plan is just kind of stay away from Joker until that runs out. Kind of does encourage a, a more defensive play style. But it looks like G-Dog has got himself in a comfortable position here underneath Koopinator. In Smash Bros, of course, it is generally advantageous to be below your opponent because if they get stuck up on a platform they cannot hit you down through the platform but you can hit them from underneath there are very few moves that will actually hit anywhere below a platform and usually not by very much 
So it's generally, especially with a character like Cloud, who's got this big sword he can throw out there before he's putting his body on the line, he can kind of just swing freely up through those platforms and create juggle situations where he's got his opponent stuck above him. So G-Dog showing that uh, they understand that advantage state pretty well, taking advantage of it. Ooh, slides right in underneath the projectile from Joker there. Koopinator trying to get some uh, something going here. Has hit, you know, quite a few moves. Got a bunch of damage. Is able to finish it off with a forward smash. We're not seeing a lot of lengthy follow-ups from Joker here. We're seeing a lot of single hits. Um, generally, you know, when you get one hit, you want to be able to press your advantage because usually your opponent is off their footing. They're in a position they don't want to be in. And uh, if you keep the pressure up, you can often either land combos or just maintain positional advantages like you will in the juggle scenario. Nader able to break out. Overcommits a little bit on the attack, but... Oh, massive up B out of shield from G-Dog. It's a solid option if the opponent is right on top of you, but if you miss, that's a huge commitment. Cloud's got to come all the way back down to the ground. going to be very vulnerable when he lands. G-Dog has him off stage, uses the opportunity to charge limit, and quickly shoots a blade beam that doesn't hit. So no more limit for G-Dog. But no more Arsene for Koopinator. Go back to their their first forms. They gotta they gotta power up more. They gotta they gotta stand and yell like in Dragon Ball Z. And there's the up B. Catches Koopinator out of the air, and the blade beam might actually do it at this point. Yep. Joker face palms right against the screen. Ah oh, man, I'm breaking the fourth wall in a Smash Bros. game. Darn it. So G-Dog looking pretty strong, looking like one of the players to beat out there. Um, I would not be surprised if they have at least some competitive experience based on the way that they're playing. They know their options pretty well. All right, straight back to Battlefield. So no stage counter pick, or maybe this is just the stage that Koopinator likes the most. There's a procedure. If you uh, want to check out match procedure on Discord, all you have some time, uh, in competitive Smash, where players have the opportunity to pick the stage that benefits them the most when they lose. Um, the opposing player will generally get a ban or two, depending on the rule set. But otherwise, the entire stage list of uh, legal stages becomes open to the losing player. And from there, they get to think, all right, what benefits my character the most? What's a stage where I'm more likely to beat my opponent? Because the stage really does matter a lot in this game. It can determine how early you get KO'd by a move. Nader loses first stock here to G-Dog. Still fairly close. Can determine things like the platform arrangements, and that can often help a character's movement. It can help a character's punish game. So if they knock an opponent up on a platform and like that situation, you know, they obviously want to go to a stage with platforms. So Koopinator behind by a little bit of percent, but definitely capable of making that up, especially with Arsene out. Arsene causes Joker's moves to deal more damage and also changes the properties of some of them. So, for example, the projectile gets a lot bigger. Trying to counter a couple of times there, Koopinator is, and G-Dog wise to it, waits to swing until after the counter comes out, 
and is able to capitalize on that win to get a stock. Scoopinator now behind by a little bit wants to avoid taking damage at this point because any damage right now that G-Dog gets is just gravy. G-Dog already has a lead, but they just ratchet that lead further forward by getting damage while their final stock cannot be touched. That's some good damage there from Koopinator, but they need to get this finishing blow here. They're really telegraphing that they're going for a smash attack. So G-Dog is going to be careful and going to just shield right there. You can see, knew that the smash attack was coming and just shielded it right away because he'd seen so many attempts at that smash attack before. So Koopinator sitting at 85% has lost Arsene at this point too. Now, at 156, even a standard smash attack, definitely going to do it, but... Oof. G-Dog just looking to finish it right now before they lose this stock. That's a strong forward air. Nader able to make it back just barely. Gets up with the get-up attack, and the dash attack might do it. Can Cloud make it back from this? Yes, he can, just barely. Right at the edge of his recovery, just spamming the up the forward smash now is Koopinator. Ooh, and G-Dog takes him out. All right. So, we'll wait just a second to hear what our next match is going to be here. Thank you, G-Dog and Koopinator. You guys are free to head off the stream. Let's see here. A whole bunch of matches coming in. Let's take a quick look at the bracket and see. What's going on over there? So G Dog taking that 2-0 over Koopinator. That puts them into, I believe, winners quarterfinals, yes. So they're up there with Legends, with Kevin S, and then the one, the uh, couple of other players not been decided for those yet. We've still got some round two matches finishing up.
Ah, yes. Welcome, Hekka. Congratulations on obtaining exactly nothing. So we're chilling here for a bit, just waiting for our uh, bracket to allow for matches for us to play. Got a couple of interesting prospects here. It'd be cool to see uh, some matches in other sides of the bracket here. All right, looks like Needs More Salt has made it up through the bracket on the other side to be able to play against G-Dog. That should be an interesting match in the winner's quarterfinals. All right, G-Dog is just making the stream run right now. That's what you get for being able to play your matches promptly and getting them done. So this is going to be G-Dog versus Needs More Salt, and we're up into Winner's Quarterfinals now. So we should be able to see some other winner, Winner's Quarterfinals matches. Once we're through with this. taking bets now on which character they play. Okay. Making an argument for Bowser here. Although G-Dog doesn't play Fox. Well, that's not Fox either. That's Fox's dad. But you can tell because he's wearing aviators. <laughs> Fox doesn't wear sunglasses. What a silly thing to do in a spaceship. It's actually a very not silly thing to do. It's surprising you don't see it in other depictions of, of space movies. It's like, there's, you're just like looking at stars, like the sun. You should probably, you know, not look directly at that without some, some eye protection. So they'll be going through their process of picks and bands to start with.
Seems like uh, Need Salt has uh, found themselves to be to be out of salt and has gone to the pantry to go and grab some. Sure, they'll be back. Any of y'all ever been to, to a land where someone brings in a container of, like, Morton salt and just puts it on the table? This is just... This is just a warning. I am a salt collector. Yeah, I've seen multiple people do that. It's, it's like uh, some people will, like, bring a plushie of their character around. So, like, CPU Zero from Arizona, it, like, brings this big Jigglypuff plushie and just kind of sits it on the table so it's staring at their opponent while they play. Don't do something unsafe on S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> Discussing stages, yeah. No worries, no worries. I'm sure there was something like that going on. An Autobomb replica to bring around with me? <laughs> that would be hype. Imagine there's an Autobomb for Inkling and Smash. Or rather than this, like, you get, or maybe you get to choose, like, Certain alts have certain sub weapons or something like that. So the auto bomb kind of works like a bob bomb, except it automatically walks in the direction of your opponent. I guess that that's kind of like um, Bowser Jr.'s wind up toys. Yeah, it's all good. I'm 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 just. I'm just being being silly here. No rush to the players for making their stage choices. It is a relatively involved system. Alrighty, here we go. We've got a Ridley versus a Cloud here. Ridley is an interesting character. Very unique play style based on uh, their size and their frame data. Very slow, in particular out of shield options. Their, their frame data isn't fantastic. So... They're good in edgeguard situations. Running off stage, they have some really large hitboxes that can cover a lot of space. They've also got a projectile that's good at covering a certain angle. But on stage, it's a little bit harder for them to play neutral. You're going to have to maybe play a little bit predictively to get around a faster character like Cloud. So far, very even, though. Got a back throw off stage. Let's see if they can uh, execute an edge guard here. Ooh, massive forward smash there from Needs Salt. Let's see if G Dog can equalize. He's got an edge guard situation right here. Needs Salt trying to poke through the bottom of the stage with up airs. G Dog respecting it, but. Uh, to note that he's got that tech, got that ability. Now it hits a forward air, but it's not going to combo into anything. Really wants 
to finish this stock more than anything. Doesn't need damage, doesn't need combos, just needs a finisher. Tries to throw out the blade beam preemptively and needs salt, just kind of waits that out. This is a significant lead now for needs salt. There's the up throw. Cloud doesn't really have uh, great KO options off of the throws. Just gonna try and uh, set up an edge guard position. Maybe charge limit, maybe get something like a finishing touch off, but finally is able to get it and actually uses the finishing touch, I think, after getting the KO. So unfortunately, will not have that limit to use on this stock, but starting off real hot, gets 69 unanswered damage, 80. It's even again. G-Dog just equalized that. Oh my god. Needs Assault drags him under the stage. True to form, really. That's just kind of a thing Ridley would do. Just picks him up and drops him where he can't recover. It's a down throw. Bears through the bottom of the stage again, and G-Dog just not biting on that. Throws out a limit blade beam, and that is going to be enough at 170%. Good uh, tech roll chase there. Why tech chase yourself if you can have your projectile do it for you? Oh, goes for a limit finishing touch. I don't think that would have KO'd. I wonder if that was a mistake. Maybe they were trying to charge limit and they accidentally used it. Ooh, okay. Is that going to do it? I don't think so. Yeah. That might, though. That will. Needs Salts is the winner of game one here. So after a good winner's run so far, G-Dog is meeting some competition that's a little bit stiffer. See if he's going to be able to bring it back. How do we join the tournament is a question I see in chat. Uh, this tournament is run specifically for Rowan University. Uh, Signups took place prior to the event. At this point, it is significantly too late to get you into the bracket. We've already played all of our round ones. There's really not a great way to fit you in here i guess maybe if someone had dq'd but i don't think there is anybody that we could replace you with in the bracket here um so that really wouldn't be doable at this point in time um there was a, a discord server shum d suzy were you able to get into that um the discord server is where we're running the event from so from uh the, your information should be provided to us unless wait what's your what's your tag Wondering if you ended up in the bracket and I just don't recognize you. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, so there was information uh, that we needed to put you into the bracket um, that you would have had to provide us. Didn't register. Okay, that would do it. And then uh, there's a Discord server where all of the matches are being called that you would also have needed to come into. So maybe if there's a uh, another event in the future... We'll be able to plug you in from there. Sorry about that, though. You hate to see it. Hope you're enjoying the stream, though. How's it going, John from Homeroom? Good to see ya. Neat Salt says, hi there. Good fight. Nicely done. We love the positivity. <laughs> so close, grr. <laughs> Nothing like a friendly growl at your opponent to make some friends. Uh, to answer the DM that I just received from Needs Salt, uh, will VODs of the tournament be available after the stream ends? So, of course... Right away, you'll be able to see the Twitch archive, but 
we will also be archiving this entire broadcast in one batch file on the Bravest VODs YouTube channel. Um, so you know the, the, the word Bravest that's in our stream name. That is, you know, the brand name that of uh, the, the company that's running this on your behalf. Um, we have a YouTube channel that is um, uh, the, our main forward-facing channel. But then we have a VODs channel where we archive all of the events that we do um, in bigger batch files that are less edited. Um, that's so that, you know, we're not bombarding people with all of these, you know, two or three hour broadcasts um, hurting our metrics for that, you know. We, we've just got a separate channel for all of those backlog of VODs, and you'll be able to find it all there. Yeah, no problem, Need Salt. We can definitely send you the details of that after this is done. Although, we'll also be putting that as an announcement in the Discord server, so you can probably just look for it there. All right. So, right now we've got most of the winners' quarterfinals matches ready to go or in progress. Just so happened that on that other end of the bracket, we have two different people who are both sharing their Switch consoles playing against each other. Unfortunate circumstance. It's generally a much better plan entering an online tournament to uh, make sure you've got your own console to play on. Because um, then if you and your teammate, you and the person you're sharing a, a console with, get called for a match at the same time, it takes twice as long for that to happen and that can delay the event. But uh, we're doing the best we can here. We're going to get through it. All right, got a good opening from G-Dog there, but uh, Need Salt able to come down with that uh, forward air there. G-Dog coming down with that up B. Big fan of using that move. And there's Limit Charge for Cloud. Go for a, a Blade Beam there. It's interesting, you tend to see a lot of clouds try and save up so that they can use a finishing touch or maybe a, a limit cross slash. Occasionally, if they're at really high percent, they'll save it so that they can recover better. But uh, G-Dog seems to really like the limit blade beam. Seems to be trying to catch people out from further away and see if they can sneak stocks out that way. Now the uh, the challenge with it, you know, it's it's kind of like a charge shot. If you're that far away and they see that you have limit, they're, they're kind of uh, trigger finger, literally trigger button finger, is twitching, ready to shield. Because they're going to have more warning about that limit blade beam than they will about the cross slash or the finishing touch. Ooh, there's a cross slash. Oh, not quite going to KO. If they had been any closer to center stage, I bet that would have KO'd. Got a nice edge guard situation here, though. Gonna be able to finish it with a nice back air. Well spaced, well timed. Oh, and Need Salt just runs in with the invincibility and up smashes. Ridley flexing on him by standing up, revealing his true height. Ridley, more like Chadley, am I right? Salt looking stronger on this match. G Dog having some trouble tacking on damage. It's 
beat it off stage here. Gonna survive the rapid jab and just forward air him in the face. Oh, and the uppy on stage finishes it off. So that is gonna go to Needs Salt 2 0. Strong showing from them. It'll be interesting to see how far they can go in the tournament here. That's booked them a spot in winner's semifinals, so they are guaranteed fifth place. G Dog, meanwhile, I won't say we've seen the last of him. May drop down into the loser's bracket from that, but you can definitely make it back out from there. Might be able to go up and get that rematch. All right, looks like we're going to have Guapster versus Legends at this point. So, get them up on stream now. For those of you who weren't here when I last spoke about it, we are Bravest Esports. We are a company that is uh, not, you know, formally affiliated with Rowan University. Um, so we've, uh, we're a third party that has been hired to help out with this event. Our goal is to help support local grassroots esports organizations, whether they be from schools, from municipalities, from businesses, and just to help people Find a friend playing a video game. We do all sorts of different events. We do leagues. We also do content creation. If you're interested in our platform fighter show, for example, we have one of those on Thursdays on the same stream. If, you, if there are any fellow woomies out there, I'll plug my uh, Squid School Splatoon stream. It happens on Tuesdays. So if you're looking for more of us, you can find us on the YouTube channel that we will be posting uh, after the fact so that you can find your VODs. And also find us on this stream for more stuff like this. Uh, what is the Discord? So there is a Discord server specific to this event, which is called something like Rowan University Smash. Yeah, Rowan University Smash. There is also a Bravest Community Discord, uh, which is where people from all sorts of different events that we have run can come together to meet and uh, maybe find somebody else who plays. Um, it's very active right now, especially for Splatoon. We've also got a bunch of Smash players on there. And uh, really, any game that you want to get going in there, you know, go in and uh, check and see if there are people who are interested. Um, so this is the Community Discord that we run to try and uh, be able to keep people, you know, playing with other people who share their interests, even if they don't go to the same school. But as for the Discord for the event itself, um, that one is open to people who registered. Um, and it will be getting shut down shortly after the event is done. Um, so if you guys want to kind of stick around, hang out with each other, I would make sure to be, you know, exchanging friend codes or maybe saying, hey, let's meet up in the, the community Discord server for Bravis or something like that. So we've got Legends here. Uh, Guapster, if I remember correctly, is one of the players who's sharing a console. So I'll double check in on that and see if uh, that's someone who is going to be able to play in the near future.
Apologies, I need to turn off my hotkeys so that I don't accidentally uh, switch scenes on you. Also, do we have any music requests? Anybody want me to be playing something out of the massive jukebox that is this video game? Quest for You Will Know Our Names. We'll put that on for a minute. Multi-Man Melee 2. Also an excellent choice. Do I detect that we have a melee fan? Question mark face. Or maybe they just like the song, who knows. school they like playing ultimate war yeah that's acceptable that is an opinion that is valid if y'all ever looked up the uh th there's a a video of the melee target test music getting slowed down so it's like half time or something like that it's actually really cool i think that song is in this game isn't it Take a quick look. Let's break the targets in here. Might actually not be. Targets, is that it? No, that's not the melee one. Okay, never mind. Anyway. Um, there's a, a really cool YouTube video where someone slows that song down and there's just so much more detail in it that you can't hear at the tempo that they normally play it at. It's very chill. Definitely a vibe. Highly recommend.
think it was a uh, Guapster and Tofu Master who are sharing a console at the moment. Currently, we have Ray Ray or Chao Ray Ray playing Tofu Master, and then we've got Legends versus Guapster, which is what we're waiting on here. If I had to hazard a guess, I would say that it's, right now Ray Ray versus Tofu Master is probably happening. And then once that match is able to finish. Then we'll have our match here, Legends versus Guapster. Now, one of the nice things about the Ray Ray versus Tofu Master there, for the sake of keeping the tournament rolling, is that uh, however that match ends up going, uh, one of them is going to be dropped out of the winner's bracket here. So we'll only have so many people left in winner's bracket who are playing on a shared console. Might help speed things up at least for the stream's sake at that point. But uh, we'll be keeping tabs on uh, all of our players who are sharing, making sure that uh, their matches get played as expediently as we can possibly have them played. And things should run pretty smoothly from there, I think. Looking at uh, the other side of the bracket, we've just had a report capped, defeats Zagreus 3, making their way all the way up to winner's semifinals. So the same position that needs Salt has now managed to get to from beating G-Dog. So capped is now guaranteed fifth place. Zagreus is still in a pretty good position. Guaranteed top nine there. If they win, they're in the top eight for sure. We've got a whole bunch of music requests coming in, so we're going to switch it up to uh, Multi Man Melee now. Multi Man Melee 2. It's like right here. There it is. Ah, yes. This is the, uh, the music that's based on the title sequence for Super Smash Brothers Melee. I think they do actually have like the original like intro sequence music playing there, but I guess maybe this is designed to loop better. Wireframes were a really weird concept for that game. They didn't like mirror any other characters. They were just kind of like a really wimpy, oversized version of Captain Falcon and uh, Zelda. Just kind of loosely designed them around those two characters and then blew them up and just made them act really weird. Hey, Guapsters managed to find their way in. Awesome. So we should have them getting their match started shortly. They'll just be working on getting their stage strikes made and everything. Let's see, we are in winner's quarters, I believe. Yes, that is correct. Let's see what characters they end up landing on. 
I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the gamble that this is an inkling player. What do y'all think? I I guess some of y'all probably know, but I think we got a Wumi. Wumi. Because, see, sometimes you can't trust it. Like, you look at, at my profile here. I've got an Inkling as my avatar, but I don't play Inkling in this game. I play Inkling in Splatoon 2. <laughs> so, sometimes you can't trust it. But, I feel like I might be right here. Got a hunch. All right, looks like Legends is all set. Thinking that probably means that they've got the stage chosen. Guap says, let's have some fun. I wholeheartedly agree with that sentiment. Hey, I nailed it. Let's go. That exact Wumi. All right. Three, two, one, go. So here we go. Starts off throwing out a splat bomb. Looking like any Rainmaker match ever. Gets that jab combo. Inkling's jab combo very nice for painting the opponent up and getting giving him that debuff. Look at how yellow Wolf is right now. It's going to take forever to get that stuff out of his fur. Lobster with the slight advantage so far. He charges a little bit of ink but gets punished for it. Legend's trying to take stage control because of that. That's going to be a huge pain in the butt for Guapster if the uh, roller is a big part of his play style. Because that laser from Wolf is just going to shut it all the way down. Just <laughs> Legend's just kind of running away from him. Blobster trying to rickroll him here. But uh, this game, you keep running around with rollers for too long. You're just going to run yourself out of ink. Oh, no. Legend misses the angle on the recovery. Isn't able to grab ledge, and so Blobster actually taking the lead here. It's a very slight lead. He's at 149%. Get taken, taken out by a stiff breeze, and uh, Wolf's up smash isn't exactly a stiff breeze either. I'm actually surprised that forward air missed from Legends. A smaller hitbox than I thought. So there's that jab combo. Ooh, gets buried. Not able to get over there in time with the forward smash, though. Good mashing from Legends. In that kind of situation, Flop might be forced to do something a little weaker, like maybe a dash attack or something. Because uh, rolling back in that direction isn't going to get them there fast enough. They're going to need to cancel the roller and maybe dash over. Or jump at them or something, depending on what it is they want to do. Good ledge pressure there from Guap. Goes all the way off stage, but no hitbox, so gets hit by the up B. You can see they've got the idea there for the aggressive edge guard. That was interesting. I didn't know that if something traded with the roller, the roller would just kind of push you instead of burying you afterwards. Bop recovers a little too high on stage. Just going to get punished with a dash attack there. 
Ooh, the up smash out of shield is dodged by Guap. Going all the way in there for the roller. Basically out of ink at this point. I'm surprised the legends didn't approach. I felt like uh, seeing that Guap was out of ink, seeing him retreat to the other side of the stage like that, I was waiting for him to try and recharge. Might be something to watch as the Inkling's opponent so that you can punish it when they're moving over there with that intention. Oh, that laser was so on point and it just happened to despawn right before it would have hit. Legends has just stretched this stock out forever. It's not even like they're not going even in damage. Just Legends, like, survived the whole way. You're good, but I am better. Legends had a, a two-stock lead in a situation that easily could have been close if they'd just managed to get a KO there. But Legends taking game one against Guapster. We'll see. I, I'm anticipating that the Inkling is the main here and that uh, they're probably not going to try for a different character. I think that was pretty close. It, it, it might have gotten a little bit unlucky with not being able to find that second stock from Wolf. Because uh, I think, again, like I said, if they did take that stock at a normal time, they would have been at pretty even percents on last stock together there based on just how much damage went down. So I wouldn't necessarily give up the game plan yet if I'm Guap here. I'd rather uh, try it on a favorable stage and... Maybe just, you know, try and be a little better about uh, getting KO confirms. See if I can swing it my way for game two. Right back into it, same characters. Let's see what stage Guap decided to counterpick to. Three, two, one, go! Interesting, just going back to the same stage here. Might have wanted a little bit of a redo. Maybe they just liked this stage and they were happy to strike to it on game one. Legend's looking really solid right now. Just hasn't gotten hit very much at all. Hmm. Maybe when Guap recovers high, they're trying to go for that mix-up where uh, the opponent expects they can punish and don't realize there's a hitbox coming down from the super jump. You know, Guap's just got a good game plan here. They're trying to box the wolf into a corner and throw things like splat bombs out to cover wolf's movement options and pin them. But uh, Legend's proving a little too slippery for that so far. It's off the offstage edge guard, but wolf is able to just grab ledge and reverse the situation. Good reversal from Guap. Gets some ink back. Tries to go in for the roller and 
just getting hit every time, losing all of their stage position. Great up smash, though. So that'll equalize the stock count. 76% in the favor of Legends. Like in the dash dance here. Swap doing a great job of maintaining stage control. Legends is having a hard time getting a hit in. Comes up to pressure the ink recharge, but Guap just hits him back and charges the rest of it. Comes down at him with the roller. I like that uh, Guapster is starting to recognize situations where Wolf isn't falling for the roller and he's letting go of it. Did you just duck a laser? Is that a thing you can do? I feel like it just despawned right in front of him. Ooh, rolls right into the charge forward smash. You just do standard get up there, you're fine, but uh it's unfortunate. We're just all the way to the edge with the uh shield there, but uh I think the plan was to follow him with the jump, because jump out of shield is one of Legend's only movement options at that point. There it is, Guap able to cancel the roller this time, turn around, get that forward smash. Even game. Drops looking a lot stronger in this round. I'm gonna have a splat bomb. Wolf is like, I don't need this. I can just shoot lasers. Oh, but he can't shoot lasers that close. Jab combo goes out. Gets footstooled, so Legends is able to get back to center stage. Ooh. Attacked right through it. Gets buried, though. No follow-up on that. Wolf is a too low of a percent. We've seen Legends mash out of worse than that. And Guap has just accidentally advertised that he's out of ink. Really needs to get down there and recharge it. He eats a dash attack for it. Is off stage. Was that worth it? We'll have to see. They do make it back. They get a nice back air into dash attack. Going all the way out there, anticipating, I think, a much higher recovery than Legends was telegraphing. Gets forward smash in the face, and Legends will take it. You're good, but I'm better. So that drops Guapster down into the loser's bracket. So Legends will be advancing to play against Needs More Salt. So we'll see who Eyes is going to bring up onto the stream next. Send y'all a GG. Is, is there really not a GG here? Maybe it's after the battle? Before the battle? Greetings? All? <laughs> Let's go for all. I know there's like a GG in here, isn't there? Am I... Am I mistaken? I might be mistaken. get there all right so we're gonna it looks like we're keeping legends on stream here and bringing needs more salt on for winners semifinals Okay, 
Winner semis is a pretty significant match here. Because if you win, you go from being guaranteed fifth place to being guaranteed third place. Um, so this sends you pretty far up in the bracket. Um, gives you a much better shot of winning the whole thing because you just don't have that many more matches you've got to play at that point. If you lose, you end up in loser's quarterfinals and you have to win that and then loser's semifinals and then loser's finals to get back up to the point where you can make it to grands. Alrighty. So Legend's gonna stick around here and Needs Salt will be returning. We'll see if they remain on the character that they played against G-Dog. Got word from Needs More Salt. I'll be on in just a second. I I'll be in on just a second. Oh, that changes everything. No, it really doesn't. So I'm curious, folks, what, what are, are y'all's thoughts on Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl? So there have been a lot, of, uh, a lot of content creators starting to take notice of that game. Be interested to hear what you guys think of it. Uh, DDD's theme, that was what we were looking for, which is going to be here. Are we talking Brawl or are we talking 3DS Wii U? Probably Brawl. I would think. I don't know. Smash Killer. Bold. Well, we'll put it on Brawl. I'm not sure for sure, but... It's interesting. Uh, like, you know, Slap City was a game that a lot of people were getting hyped about and talking about in that kind of context. Like, wow, wait, this is very similar to Smash. This might actually be interesting to Smash players. This might pull people away from that game. Didn't end up doing that, but I think a big difference here is that Slap City was new IP that nobody had heard of. But now you can make SpongeBob Wave Dash. Like, I don't know. <laughs> that, that might actually, because the mainstream appeal, I think is a part of what helps build the competitive scene for Smash. I think the fact that there are so many people who play this game casually and then, you know, one day they end up playing against someone who absolutely destroys them. And they're like, whoa, I didn't know people were this good at this. And that's part of what kind of feeds the competitive scene, that people see how much further the game can go and decide to try and pick it up for themselves. I think Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, you know, if there is a competitive scene for that, definitely has the potential to grow in largely the way that uh, Smash did. And what with all the Smash players who are for sure going to be giving it a try, there's certain to be at least some core of competitive players. Um, there's some very significant departures from Super Smash Brothers in the mechanics of it. So one of the things I'm looking for is, it, is there something in that game that's just broken? Like... Maybe being able to cargo throw someone and chain grab someone off the edge <laughs> with a character that has a, the best recovery in the game is just going to be broken because you can like grab someone, throw them, grab them off the edge, throw them off the edge, grab them off the edge again, throw them off the edge again. And at that point, maybe your character can re recover and they can't, you know, maybe that's a thing that happens. And so that character is just busted. Um, th there are a lot of uh, possibilities that you know, we'll have to test out. We'll have to see how they work in higher level play. 
and see if the game really does have the same kind of competitive legs under it as a game like uh, Melee or Smash Ultimate. Brawl 1. Perfect. Nailed it. Here we go. Legends versus Needs Salt. This is winner's semifinals. Loser gets fifth. Winner advances to winner's finals where they're guaranteed third. Needs Salt taking the edge right away. Possibly trying to play that sort of uh, Mewtwo King play style where you sit close to the edge and uh, try to wait for your opponent and bait them off the edge against you. Known for trying that with a number of different characters across a couple of different games. Ooh. Goes in for an unsafe attack on shield. Legend's gonna punish with an up smash. Good damage so far from needs or on needs salt. Legends is uh, probably feeling pretty good about that. Does get clipped by the uh, up air through the stage. Gets grabbed all the way to the other side. And uh, Need Salt just decides to drag him all the way instead of uh, throwing him at some point. And that forward tilt, just fantastic edge guarding tool and very powerful, takes Need Salt out. So Need Salt. Trying to equalize here. If they equalize at this point, you can basically consider it even. 8% is nothing. But if Legends is able to really string something together here, that could be trouble. 59%. Good look for Legends right now. And they're still not really in a disadvantage state. Good up smash. Legends not necessarily playing the neutral game perfectly, but I think the uh, frame data of Wolf is definitely helping out here. Kind of... He does something unsafe. High commitment. Ridley is just a little on the slow side. Not necessarily able to cover that every time. Goes for the up B. Doesn't work out against Legends. That was the uh, finishing blow in the set against G-Dog. Needs Salt finally e able to equalize stocks, but sitting at 91%. Definitely going to be looking for some cheese here, it looks like. Trying to get, off get him off the ledge and uh, go for something here. Legends just playing it safe. Down smash almost KOs. Just trying to go for that forward tilt that we've seen before. Ooh, there's the equal, uh, the uh, the reversal from Need Salt. It's good damage here. Has Legends off the stage. Commits a little too early, and Legends able to get back on. Fireballs, but the up B gonna save Legends there. Ooh, dead even at this point. Need Salt has done a good job of pulling this back. Lots of pressure at the ledge, and the up smash is gonna take it. Salt pinned at the ledge, or are they? Maybe that's where they wanted to be all along. Get a good 40 damage onto Legends. Let's just go to the grab. Whips. Up smash as well. Gets punished for that. Here's a grab. Fireballs. He's just going to wait those out patiently, but get up smashed it. And that's just going to do it. What a powerful attack from Needs Salt. And uh, it was looking like Legends... Kind of had it figured out, but Needs Salt turned it up a little bit. Able to actually finish the game with a two stock.
Legend's switching it up now, playing Joker. See if that gives them a different tool set to work with here. Going to Kalos. Popular Joker stage. Ooh, and the Arsene actually stalls so that uh, Needs Salt misses the attack. It's funny. Needs that Arsene recovery to make it back from that one. Needs Salt is looking really strong on this edge guard opportunity here. Legends hanging on for dear life. Gets fireballed off the stage here. Needs Salt just kind of standing up. Not punished for it. Multiple taunts in a row. Ridley has really fast taunts. Like, that's honestly the sort of thing that uh, I would think you could use as a bait. If you throw out a taunt and the opponent's like, oh, they're just taunting me. Let's go hit him. But then your taunt finishes faster than they expect and you're able to be actionable out of it. Taking big swings at each other. Both missing. Legends doesn't opt to put a hitbox out there. I feel like they probably could have edgeguarded there, but... I don't know. Maybe there's just not a hitbox on Joker that's going to come out in time for that one. The jab combo. Trying to take him out off stage. Trying to go for the guns. Not panning out yet. And the back air from Needs Salt will actually take that stock before Legends can finish it. Beautiful combo there, but does not use a finisher at the end of it. So Needs Salt is still on the stage, still edge guarding. And there's a forward smash from Legends. In some trouble here on last stock. 86% and there goes Arsene and there goes Legends off the stage not quite going to get KO'd yet but I have to think it's only a matter of time from how this has been going we'll see if Legends can pull off the miracle comeback Woo! beautiful recovery there from Legends slipping right underneath the edge guard oh but this grab might do it baits out the counter with an up air and then is able to up smash to finish the job. So needs Salt taking a 2-0 victory over Legends. All right. So looking like that will send us to, uh, I would imagine what's gonna happen next is the other side of winner's semis. Yep, that is what was called. So we're going to have Kevin S versus Capped. Uh, I don't think we've spent any time on this side of the bracket so far. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what's been developing on the other end. What has been brewing over here? What trouble do we have to face? So Kevin S made it here. Had, didn't have a buy or anything. Had to play K, excuse me, K-Plums. Then Jonathan and then Tofu Master. That's been their run. Capped, meanwhile, beating G Unit, Pigzilla 21, and Zagreus 3 to be able to get here. Neither of them have lost a game yet in their tournament runs. One of them will receive their first loss in this round. Or maybe two. Could be a game three situation, you know? This is still only winner's semis. So like we saw in that last round between Legends and Needs Salt, this will only be a best of three. We've got a K-Plums fan. Let's check in and see how K-Plums is doing here. Um, so K-Plums lost their round one match against Kevin S. Then, let's see. 
Then they were up against Sylvain Gautier, a noble, of course. Um, and they did take a game in that round, but uh, Sylvain won it 2-1. to one. And so K Plums was eliminated at that point in the bracket. But you know what? They've got a friend in Twitch chat. And at the end of the day, isn't that all that really matters? Friend or... I, I, I don't know. Lover. Mom. Uncle. Hard to say. <laughs> Girlfriend, there you go. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you've got a girlfriend, you're doing better than most Smash players. I mean, what? <laughs> well, really appreciate seeing you here to support ya boy. Right now, we're going to see Kevin versus Jared. So, apparently, Cap's name is Jared here. Got Wispy Woods. Versus Little Mac. I could see this being a Little Mac, but I could also see it being a different character. Um, Little Mac is a very polarizing character. Um, a lot of people will tell you he's like one of the worst characters in the game by far. Because his recovery is just garbage. His ground game is kind of scary. He's got some fairly fast options that do a lot of damage if you're, you know, getting intimidated by the KO punch be easy for him to manipulate you into getting hit by it so eh, can be tricky um relatively fast on the ground as well just the air control is not there really bad disadvantage state jared meantime got wispy i mean that could telegraph a kirby choice but that's a stretch you can just as easily telegraph a ddd Dang, We've got G Dog calling that uh, needs salt is gonna win the tournament. That is, you know, I mean they are in a pretty good position to do that, better position than anyone else right now. They are sitting in winners finals, and we don't have anybody else on the other side of winners finals yet. That's what this match is about. But uh, we don't know what's going on on the other side of the bracket, like needs salt is saying. Um, so there could be some killers here. It's interesting, you know, I was I was thinking maybe the players would know each other, uh, at least some of them, like from a competitive scene or something like that. Usually, you know, we see an event that's this big. That means that uh, there's a pretty strong local competitive scene and that uh, at least some of the players are going to know, you know, who the uh, players to beat are going to be. But it seems like a lot of people are going in blind here. We really didn't know much about the seeding or anything. Uh, it makes it really exciting. Because now you get to find out through trial and error. Great down throw forward air combo coming out there from Kevin. Showing that they understand the, uh, the punish game from this character pretty well. Gets the charge shot shined right back at them. Jared's like, I don't think so. Jared being capped, by the way. Try to refer to them as such. I don't know if that's short for captain or if it's just capped. I could see it being both. Like, maybe, maybe like, Falco, you know, he's got a gun. He's capping him. Alright. Yeah, Kevin playing this uh, zoner play style with the zero suit, or the, not the zero suit, the Dark Samus here. Dark Samus, uh, very large character, very big hitbox, and not a ton of very fast options from the ground. Um, but they do have a really good forward air, controls a lot of space, great zoning tool, um, great kind of get off me option. 
They also have, you know, a B out of shield, which has been a, a staple of Samus play since the very beginning of their appearance in Smash Bros. And so they have the tools they need where if they do get pinned down in a corner, they can kind of get themselves out of it and then run away again. And they're just going to try and shoot those charge shots and those missiles. Control space that way. So Kevin able to take the stock is down 100% though. So this is a pretty comfortable lead right now for Capt. Um, but we'll see what Kevin can do to try and equalize it a little bit before they lose their stock. Oop. Nice. All right, Kevin's bringing this back. Kevin's looking pretty good right now. Captain needs to kind of find a way in and get this stock, and that'll do it. The up air off the top, but 75%? It's a pretty good uh, amount for Kevin to be able to get before going down there, considering the situation. Ooh, that forward air puts him off stage. Has to double jump over the top. Great awareness there from Cap to avoid that edge guard. Oh, Kevin goes for the upbeat. He's going to get punished pretty hard for this. 17%. Not the worst, honestly. Could have been a lot more scary. Jared gets a couple of up airs. Not going to KO. Goes for the charge down smash. <laughs> and that just gives Kevin a free opportunity to up B for the stock. So Kevin down by a little bit right now, but has made some ground up. Unfortunately, off stage. Great job grappling the ledge there. Tries to roll up on stage, gets caught by the down smash, and the back air will do it from Jared. <laughs> Capped, able to take game one. Some really interesting back and forth between the players there. Kevin definitely had some opportunities. Um, I think if they're able to take it to like a big stage, maybe a stage with fewer platforms or something like that, where Falco has a harder time getting around the missiles and the charge shots. That might be something interesting there. Although one consideration with platforms is that platforms are your best escapes out of juggles a lot of the time. And uh, Falco been relying pretty heavily on those up airs to get strings and even a KO at one point. So that might also factor into the stage decision here. All right, taking a look at loser's bracket, just give you an update of uh, who's still in the tournament. We've got Guapster versus Pigzilla 21. Uh, looks like, let's see, where's Tofu Master playing? So it looks like Tofu Master was gonna be playing GG and then uh, Guapster will take the switch back from Tofu Master to go on from there. Then we've got Tony 11 versus Forever DM, winner of that will play G Dog. So we saw G-Dog earlier, the Cloud player. Zagreus has defeated Roku D1 and has advanced to the loser's side top eight. Tofu Master has got to play GG, winner plays Zagreus. And then the winner of that match against Zagreus will play against Legends, who is now sitting in the loser's quarters. Two, one, go! Going to small battlefield here for match number two. Kevin maybe opting not to have a top platform and try and maintain the side platform. Uh, forward air is really good at covering those side platforms there, so that might be part of the thought process. Yeah, trying to cover that uh, platform with the up smash there 
does seem like an option that can be pretty useful as long as you uh, line it up just right. It's a forward air off the stage, trying to keep the edge guard going, but does not cover the option that Capped opts to take. Pretty even so far, but Capped is off the ledge, has to find their way back in. He's able to get a, a dash attack off, trying to apply some pressure off the stage. Not going to find anything here, and Kevin is back to center. Up smash into up air, not going to find the KO yet. Kevin's being very patient here, waiting for his opponent to commit before getting up on stage. Very smart. It's a forward air. Try to keep him off. I almost want to see Kevin committing a little bit less on the edge guard, because Cap is showing a lot of that same patience on the ledge, waiting for Kevin to commit to something, and then choosing his option accordingly. I feel like uh, if Kevin were to wait before he swings, he might be able to get an edge guard better. Hard to say. But uh, Cap is made very good on this stock advantage. Already 95%. Oh, no, and this... The spike rising up catches him from off the ledge. Kevin did not have ledge invincibility anymore. Cap recognizing that and just taking him out. So that's a fantastic swing from Cap there. That's going to put a lot of pressure on Kevin at this point. Great forward air from off the ledge. Doesn't get the grab, though. It's going to combo into a lot of damage. Putting on so much pressure on the ledge here, doing a great job of not giving Kevin stage position back. As I say that, Commentator's Curse gets grabbed. Hope they recover well from that, though. Great charge shot to the dome. To grab, yeets him off. Up smash, not quite gonna KO. No DI from Kevin, but the back air probably will, and that will do it. So, Capped advances to play against Needs More Salt in Winner's Finals. Congratulations to Capped. Guaranteed third place for that finish we just saw. All right. So... looking like we're going to end up with winner's finals being up next on stream and then from there we'll be dropping down into the losers bracket and following the losers bracket all the way through to the conclusion of the tournament Winner's finals here will be our first best of five set for the tournament. We do all of the finals sets as best of fives. So that's winner's finals, that's loser's finals, and then ultimately that's grand finals. So, needs more salt versus capped. They're going to have plenty of time to kind of figure each other out. They have an extra match to burn before they can, before they'll, you know, lose the event. Lose them, not the event, the uh, the match, because they'll still drop in the loser's bracket. So, oftentimes, uh, especially if these two guys are expecting that they're going to make it back into grands, uh, this can be an opportunity for them to maybe take some time and try out some different things. You know, if uh, one character ends up looking like they're not going to work, 
maybe you just just decide okay you know what i'm not in an advantage right now i don't really have to win this set to make it back into grands maybe i take the time try and figure out something that will work and uh then by the time i get back here in grand finals i'll be all set for it um there is a significant advantage to being in grands on the winner's side because if you're in grands on the winner's side, you only have to win one set of grand finals. Um, if you're coming from the loser's bracket, this is a double elimination tournament. The player you're playing against, if you're in loser's side grand finals, has not lost yet. And so in order for them to be double eliminated, in order for them to lose twice, they, you need to beat them twice. So there's a what's called a bracket reset. If set one of grand finals goes to the player who comes from losers um so you're definitely looking to win winners finals it gives you the advantage at the end of the tournament but another thing that can come into play here is um the player who makes it into grands on winner's side they are waiting for a while they're waiting for the losers bracket to finish up um and so they might not be as warm. They might not be as on top of their game. They might need a second to kind of get back into the swing of things. Meanwhile, the player from the loser's side has won at least another match on their way through the bracket, maybe more. And they're kind of on this hot streak. They've got some momentum going, you know, they're, they've got their confidence boosted. So sometimes you can see players come up from losers and uh, make a heck of a run through grand finals, even when they weren't looking that good in winner's side. All right, here we go. Winner's finals, best of five between capped and needs more salt. Capped, gonna be a force to be reckoned with on stage. Oh my God, he actually went all the way out there for that. That's insane. He really just wants this Ridley to stay off stage. Dunks him underneath the ledge. Jared really abusing his character's aerial mobility there. Just keeping the pressure on really hard right now. It seems like a, potentially a tough matchup for Ridley. Um, the lasers are just a much faster projectile than anything he has access to. Um, the frame data is generally going to be better with Falco. gonna need to find some tricks um, one thing that could potentially work out in Ridley's favor is the edge guard situation uh, Falco doesn't have the best recovery in the game for sure um, and it's very linear it's kind of you know not the most predictable but you can often you know throw out a hitbox and hope you can catch him in the middle of it oh beautiful edge guard there pops him up with the up air and then able to follow up with the up B for the KO really tricky there from uh, needs salt now that sort of stock is the sort of thing that you can only kind of expect is going to work once because now caps is like all right all right fool me once fine but should be able to catch on to that now oh that was a mistake putting himself off stage so far there that's why i'm saying that's insane that he's going out there for these off stage edge guards very risky if you get clipped by an up or something you could get that reversed on you and lose the stock very early on you know, Jared's putting himself off stage at like 35%, something really low like that. And uh, that could easily go wrong if Needs Salt is wary of it. My god, what a powerful smash attack. I thought he was only like 60% or something, and he's just gone. Needs Salt with the equalizer right then and there. The down air! He gets hit off stage, though. No follow up from Needs Salt on the reversal. I feel like if he ledge hop nares or something, he might actually be able to catch that recovery. Oh, and the up he doesn't go far enough. The forward smash is going to connect instead from Falco. He's salt playing it very safe on this recovery, being very patient about it. Gets the grab, gets the jab combo. Stocks and percentage are basically entirely even in this down smash. Needs salt with the come from behind win on game one. What a back and forth between those two players. Wow. It seemed like Capt was generally in control of the neutral game most of the time, but Kevin with 
or not Kevin, sorry. I've got the wrong player's name up here. My bad. But needs salt with just some insane critical hits, some smash attacks that were just at the right percentage to KO, right where they needed to be on stage too. Um, and was able to claw things back. I just, more literally, I think, with Ridley than most. Okay, here we go. Ridley Falco, once again, no changes there. Pokemon Stadium. Need Salt gonna, oh, oh no. That was a mistake. Um, Need Salt has been doing a lot of that sort of thing where he, you know, drops down to the ledge, maybe trying to bait Jared out, or maybe just trying to reposition so he can get Ledge Invincibility and play from there. I was gonna say, like, he's giving himself some, some percentage from being magnified. He's going down awful low there. Just kind of, I don't know, missed it and uh, ended up failing to recover, so... Capped just at a, a huge advantage right now, owing to that massive mistake in recovery. Alright, needs salt. Trying to equalize stocks here. He's got an edge guard situation. Goes in for the down smash a little early. Cap's gonna be able to follow up on that and get the back air and Cap takes a, another stock unanswered. Cap is getting into a bit of a rhythm with the combo game here. I love that laser. That laser can really mess up a player's recovery if they tried to input the move right away. And even if not, it's just extra damage. Cap looking solidly in control right now after that really unfortunate mistake from Needs Salt. No three stock. And so it is able to equalize there, but even without the mistake, would still be at a huge deficit. Capped takes the game. Puts himself on the board. Got a 1 1 situation here now. Now, if you need salt, you, you, you gotta kind of shake that one off. That was, you know, a big mistake happened early on, set the tone for the rest of the match. You, can't really let that one get to you. Um, got to think, all right, I was doing fine in game one. Just got to keep doing more of that and trust that uh, my play is going to carry me through and that that one mistake was just a fluke. Same characters once again. We'll just see what stage they're ending up going to. I could see Need Salt just taking it back to PS2. Okay, FD instead. It's go time, he says. Retreating the ledge and trying to get, you know, ledge hop stuff going there. It's in there. He's got Falco in the corner. Good job from Cap to fight his way out of that corner, though. A lot of percent on his way around. Oh, beautiful chase with the side B. Goes for it. Gets the semi-spike with the side B there.
pretty sure that's actually just a melee term. You know, that distinction isn't really a thing in this game, but I just call it that. So it needs Salt a little bit behind here. Goes for the down smash with the two frame. Does not get it. Still has the edge guard situation. Oh, gets the two frame there, but not able to follow up in time. Oh, if they had gone for grab, they might have had it there, but... Needs Salt already at 69% here. And just baiting <laughs> Caps to go a little too far off stage there. A little bit of the, the power of having the super there. We're all able to hear my cat just now. He wants me to pay attention to him. Giving him some tricks, don't worry. Back here, we'll finish it off for caps. Ooh, gets knocked off stage. Plays it very patient. Good recovery from Caps. Good composure there. Just gets a lot of extra percent, too, on the way across the stage here. Ooh, down smash not going to connect, and that's going to lead into some more damage for Caps. is playing very brave, you know, trading with a, a lot of moves that are relatively disjointed. And uh, he's kind of willing to do that because he's up a stock. There's the command grab. Will yeet him off the stage, but needs salt is at 110% on this last stock here. Gets the up air up through the platform. Not going to get any follow-up from that. Cap retreats wisely from it. Goes all the way up off stage. Great neutral air coming out from Needs Salt. So scramble situation near the ledge. Needs Salt does get hit out of it. And so no longer has advantage state. Oh no, bounces off the ledge. Probably wanted to grab ledge there instead. And the up smash from Falco is going to finish it off. Capped able to take the lead in the set 2-1. to one. But you can see those scramble situations are kind of where Needs Salt wants Caps to be. He wants him to get off stage and kind of panic and, you know, maybe go out for something a little too aggressive. Maybe put himself in a position where he can get nared away from the stage. There are a bunch of options that Ridley has down there that are pretty tricky. And Ridley does have a pretty good long recovery. Like, there's something to be said for having a recovery that goes a far distance. But there's also something to be said for a recovery that gives you the opportunity to delay it. To uh, take your time and wait for a commitment from your opponent before you do something. And Ridley definitely has both. Three, two, one, go! Make no mistake, I will win. He's gonna have to do that if he wants to stay on winner's side of the bracket here. to Pokemon Stadium again. So uh, this is the stage where the recovery error was made by uh, Needs Salt on that one game. So Cap did win here last time, but Needs Salt trying to redeem himself on this stage, it looks like. Whew. Oh no, the air dodge off the stage? I thought we were going to see another recovery error there. Such a tricky position for Needs Salt to be in. He's such a big target. And he's stuck up on that platform. There's not that much that he can do to get away. Honestly, that trade is one of the best case scenarios for him. That gets him back onto the ledge for free. And he'll act from there, but good follow up from Capped. That side B has been fantastic for him so far. Been able to chase in situations where each salt has no answer. Sets up into combo move or it sets up into uh, KO moves like the back air. Just a great way of getting around the stage and uh, setting up for KOs. Oh, is that far enough? Yes, that is far enough. It's ch 
chunked by the up B. Still not going to get KO'd by that. A little bit predictable on the up smash there. Cap's going to be able to capitalize and get out of the corner. Oh, but jumps right into an up B. Needs salt. Feeling himself taunting. And uh, getting back aired. <laughs> throw into attempted a down air misses but even just the damage from the throw is starting to you know throw. oh no is that it there's no way up he doesn't have an angle that gets him to the ledge from there needs salt is dropped into losers bracket by capped 3-1 So Capt is going to be sitting pretty in Grand Finals after making their way all the way through the winner's bracket. Did drop their first game of the tournament. Two needs more salt there. Uh, needs more salt. Definitely has the potential to compete at that level. But we will not be seeing that rematch yet for a little while. So we've got the rest of the loser's bracket to burn our way through here. So we'll see what it is our TO is interested in streaming here. Okay, so here's what we're looking at. We've got Legends versus Zagreus going to be on stream. Uh, Legends, we saw a match or two of earlier. Zagreus was on the other side of the bracket. Um, so they had a run where they had a buy round one. Uh, so GG versus username ABCD played. Username ABCD was the winner. Zagreus defeated username and then ran up against capped in winners round three so of course with capped being in grand finals at this point that means zagreus lost that one but since then zagreus has managed to defeat roku d1 and gg so that's brought zagreus up to where we are now in losers quarterfinals loser of this will get fifth place a very respectable finish for whoever it ends up being I believe a 27 player bracket so making it to fifth out of 27 it's not a bad look at all and it looks like they both made it in here pretty promptly I love to see it we have no data on Zagreus they were on the other side of the bracket from the one that we watched primarily on the way up so we'll see what they got Meantime, other side of the bracket. We are in loser side top eight. Uh, Tony11 taking out G Dog, the uh, cloud player that we saw put up a valiant effort against Needs More Salt in the winner side. Guapster, the inkling player that we were watching, has been defeated by Pigzilla21. So now Pigzilla21 and Tony11 are fighting to be the player with the highest number at the end of their tags. And also to advance to winner's quarterfinals where they will play against Kevin S. Mm -hmm. 
gonna scooch that down there. Alrighty. So far looking pretty smooth. Okay, we've got an Incineroar. Such an interesting character. I'm a big fan of when someone brings this out in competitive play. Um, Loki has some stuff. Um, very bulky character, if not having the greatest recovery. That's probably their biggest weakness as a character. Um, but they have a really interesting command grab. And uh, they have, you know, the that mechanic... They get all fiery and stuff. And uh, if they have that revenge active, they can do very significant damage. Um, even to the point where they can KO some characters at zero off the side of the stage with a grab. So, in terms of neutral... They have a few options, a few good aerials. Um, they're a little on the slower side compared to some of the, you know, the top tiers. But being very tanky, having some good out of shield options, and this grab, which you can see, is mighty powerful, especially if it's all charged up by their counter remove. Grabs are going to be devastating and going to be a great source of stocks for them. So, Zagri is taking the uh, early first stock here. Legends still definitely has an opportunity to equalize. Just going to try and put some space between him and the grappler here. You can see, you know, even a relatively close recovery that he's got to make like that is stretching Incineroar's recovery resources all the way. Um, there are definitely some positions you can put Incineroar in off the stage where you don't really have to edge guard him because he can't make it back in the first place. Legend's putting on some good damage here. Good composure to be able to, you know, find some momentum after going down that first stock. Who you got, R-squared? Who's your boy? Who, who's the, the player you're cheering for? Or is that just a general, I want both of them to win, they're both great? That's also valid. Can we just give first place in the tournament to both Legends and Zagreus? That'd be cool. Ooh, Legends misses the recovery angle. We actually saw that error earlier on against another player. Just, oh, I had them as Joker the whole time. Lol. Hashtag professionalism. Nailed it. Okay. See, it was Wolf all along. What are you guys talking about? Of course I was right. <clears throat> anyway. So, Zagreus able to take game one. Very close match. I think if Legends doesn't make that error, it's anybody's game at that point. And remember, we are back to best of three here. This is quarters. These players have to win this match and then another match after this 
before they're going to be able to make it to the matches that are best of five. So, Zagreus wins one more and it's over. Figuring out their stage choices here. Ready? All right, stick into their guns, same character. Here we go, Yoshi story, let's get it. Much bigger stage here, gonna give Legends some room to run away. Um, so you really would prefer to be zoning the grappler here. Cinderor really wants grabs, gets a lot out of those. Also just benefits in general from being close to their opponent. Whereas Wolf has a laser. He can just kind of like not be near his opponent. And go in when he feels like it instead. Kind of knock him away with that forward tilt. And just try and play a safe edge guard game here. Okay, aerial there. Oh, but the side B actually clips Incineroar. Legends able to take first stock over Zagreus. Great dash attack anti-air. I love the spacing we're seeing out of Legends. Being very safe, trying to precisely pick apart exactly when Incineroar is vulnerable. Ooh, he's gonna be grabbed there, probably off the top. No, because larger blast zones. That's a beautiful benefit for Legends of this stage choice. The uh, grabs kill throws that uh, Zagreus is going to be going for here are nerfed considerably by having the larger blast zones. Oh no! A huge error there from uh, Zagreus. Legends went down there specifically knowing that at that distance away from the ledge, Zagreus could not safely follow him. And that trade solidly going in the favor of Legends because now he's a full stock up. And not just, you know, a stock with 100% ahead. So, some good turnaround, though, from Zagreus. Just got on top of Legends and took the stock right quick. And now we're back to just about even. Good zoning there from Legends. Oh no, Zagreus is in, not able to follow it up. The low movement speed on uh, Incineroar can make it very difficult for him to actually get in and uh, deal. What? No up B? Oh no, what happened? I thought he had time. I was like, nah, he's fine, he'll live this. And Zagreus just steals it away. Wow. So. Great job uh, from Zagreus getting those those critical hits, basically. Getting those points in the match where uh, Wolf was vulnerable. And you know, putting him off stage. Putting him in, under pressure so that the recovery is more difficult. And uh, getting the stock quick and early. Legends definitely, you know, has had really solid stage control, had an understanding of uh, where his character was able to beat Incineroar. But it was when he got off stage that things got a little more hairy. I mean, they're both very hairy. They're a wolf and a cat, but you, you know what I mean. So, Zagreus advances to loser's semifinals.
So it looks like the match has already started that we're waiting on here. We need uh, Pigzilla versus Tony to be finished, and winner will play Kevin S. So as soon as that match is done, we will have Kevin S. play them on stream here in the other side of Loser's Quarterfinals. So Kevin S., if you're out there, feel free to hop in. We're just waiting on that one match to finish here. We're going to check in and see if they want to finish up their set on stream. It looks like they might be done with a game, but not done with the set. And if that is the case, then that would be an opportunity for us to stream the rest of it. So that could work out. Otherwise, we'll just need a minute or two for their round to finish up. For those of you who have not been around to hear it, uh, we are Bravis Esports. Um, so I represent Bravis. Eyes also represents Bravis. Uh, we are an organization that was brought out by your school to run the event for you. We go out and help with local esports events run by schools, run by businesses, run by municipalities, so like parks and rec departments. Um, and we're just trying to make as many esports organizations as we can, give people as many chances to play video games with friends and get out there and have some fun, maybe improve themselves a little bit along the way. We do a bunch of different kind of kinds of content. We run events like these all the time. We have some in-person leagues that we run. We also do content for Twitch and YouTube. Um, there is a platform fighter show that would include games like Super Smash Brothers, but also looking forward to Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. Um, we have some Melee players on staff. We also have um, things like Brawlhalla, Slap City that we can throw up there. So if you're interested in any of that sort of thing, that might be the show for you. I am also a competitive Woomir. I play Splatoon 2 on a competitive level. And so I have a, a stream called Squid School on Tuesday where I teach Woomies how to Woomie even more effectively than they already Woomie. All right. Looks like Tony has defeated Pigzilla two to nothing. So Tony and Kevin S are going to be up on stream next. We have seen Kevin S before. They played against um, Capped. That's correct. Uh, so Kevin was the Dark Samus player. Tony, though, we have not seen. Let's see what their path through their bracket was to get here. Um, da, 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 da. searching, searching. There we go. So Tony actually has made a heck of a run. They lost round one against Roku D1 here. But then from there, they've beaten Jonathan 2-1. to one. They beat Forever DM 2-0. They beat G-Dog 2-0. And they just beat Pigzilla 2-0. So that's a huge string of wins that they've put together on the loser's side. Um, it's very rare that you see someone lose round one and make it that far through the bracket afterward. Especially, what happened to Roku D1? They got beaten by Zagreus on the other side of the bracket here, so that's why they're out at this point. But uh, pretty strong players that they must have had to make it through. So Tony's already, you know, this has been an accomplishment for them just to make it as far as they have, but I'm sure they don't want to leave yet. Ready? Okay, here we go. We've got Tony on the Bowser and Kevin, as we anticipated, playing the Dark Samus. And this is another set of losers quarterfinals. Starting off on Pokemon Stadium here, uh, Bowser going to be a pretty solid target for Kevin's zoning tools for the uh, forward air. That's going to catch him pretty easily. Um, it's going to be difficult for him to deal with missiles because his character is a pretty large target. 
and uh, also doesn't have... I mean, he's got the fire breath, I guess. It's barely a projectile of his own. Definitely not one that's going to hit anywhere near across the stage like Dark Samus is going to. What he does have going for him is he's fairly fast, and he lives till fairly high percent. A little bit of a recovery error there from Tony, so hopefully uh, not being affected by lag or something like that. Massive forward smash to the dome going to do it. Getting kicked like that by a dragon. Kind of understand why even the armor isn't saving Kevin at that point. He's got him stuck up in the air. Great grab. Throws him off stage. Forward air. Oh, this is going to be so tough to get back on. Tony just hasn't been able to do moves yet. Tries to down B a little bit on the slow side. Might have been able to land with a forward air or something, but a, a down B gives Tev Kevin time to get away. Up air. Almost gets him off the top. Tries to uh, down B, and Kevin almost getting the up smash. Does get the dash attack that's going to KO. So Kevin in a solid lead right now. He goes for a charged forward smash. Doesn't get it. Goes for another one. Kevin able to dash attack him through that. Just grab into forward air. Into charge shot. So much damage coming out from Kevin right now. Full stock ahead. Back throws him off stage. Do we have an edge guard? Goes for the forward air. Doesn't get it. Able to shield the forward smash. Not able to shield the grab, though. Almost gets KO'd from that. Not quite. So he's going to need a little more percent on him before that's going to work. And that down B has not been working too well for Tony. Kevin's wise to it. Gets the dash attack. Takes him out. Quick match there. Tony, you know, definitely uh, did not get put on the scoreboard. Fixing that. There we go. So, Tony definitely, you know, had his moments there. Um, had some good hard reads that he was able to use to do massive damage to Kevin when he got an opening. But Kevin played the control game very well. Um, kept center stage. Wasn't committing hard on the platforms. Was just trying to reposition and get back to the bottom and uh, get to a place where he's going to be able to control the game again. So, slow and steady wins the race here. Um, did look like Tony was going for a lot of down Bs and that uh, Kevin was definitely catching on after a while, so we'll see if we get an adaptation from Tony to do that maybe a little bit less, try and mix it up a little bit more. So there are definitely ways that Bowser has to get down from the air uh, that don't require him to do something that committal, you know, something that's going to take so long for him to stand up from once he lands. You do get some benefits um, against less experienced players just throwing the down B out there sometimes, and maybe they blunder into it. And it is a very powerful KO option, but... Uh, oh, it looks like he's opting not to go for the Bowser at all. Looks like we had a little Mac. So, assuming... That that stays. Yep. Got a Mac attack. Three, two, one, go! So, what I want to know is how Tony is going to deal with the projectiles here. How does he get past that wall that Kevin is going to put up? Jumping is really risky as Little Mac. And that is one of his best options for getting over projectiles. So, he's in there for the counter. Good wait on Kevin's part to not fall for it. Oh, no. Oh, he tried to go for a little extra and doesn't actually connect with the KO punch. Could have just KO punched right off the bat, but decides to try and uh, throw in a little bit more damage potentially get the KO out of it because it's very low percent you know you might not KO Samus at that percent I'm not quite sure whether it would have 
Again, trying to bait a move out with that counter, and Kevin just sees it coming from a mile away. He's like, you're just coming right at me, bro. I know that you're not trying to hit me with a move, because I've got a charge shot. So you're trying to get me to fire this thing, and I'm not going to fall for it. Two stocks to two. Ooh, big forward smash. A lot of damage on Kevin. Tony just getting so much of the, so much mileage out of these stray hits. Like there, that, that's a, a Little Mac special right there. You stand at center stage and make them think, okay, there's no way that he covers my recovery here. There's no way he continues this edge guard. Covering the stake from Kevin, that's unfortunate there. That gives Anthony a huge lead here. It is evaporating quickly with the damage that Kevin's putting out, but... Little Mac will uh, just kind of run really fast right up to you and punch you again. And uh, if you're not ready for it, you don't anticipate how fast he runs. You could just, you know, do standard get up from ledge and think you're safe and then get punched. Ooh. Little Mac not going to have the recovery there. Doing a little dance. Trying to get in each other's heads a little bit. Ooh, double up air. Good damage. And they wait out the counter. Honestly, they could have just grabbed it at that point. Oh, wow. I was so scared for Kevin there. I thought that that was just going to get him hit by this really powerful forward smash. Ooh, gets hit by the charge shot, but that gives him KO punch. Goes for it and hits it. Samus deleted from the screen. Tony gets himself on the board against Kevin S. It puts, it, it puts us at a 1-1 situation. Game three will decide who moves on to play against Zagreus in losers semifinals. We'll see if we see a character switch here. I wouldn't think so. I, I find a lot of like Dark Samus players are generally going to solo main that character. That's just been my experience. Playstyle is definitely best on that character and there aren't really that many matchups that are so, you know, that, that would force you onto something else. Seems to be my read on it, but hyper aware of the character so it's it's definitely possible that there are some considerations there that maybe there's some other characters that do the same thing in different ways that might be better for different matchups Kevin definitely doing some thinking here even if they are staying with the same character definitely worth it thinking about what stage they might want to go to Stage can make a pretty big difference. Ready? Sticking to the Dark Samus, let's see where they end up going. Three, two, Pokemon Stadium, one, interesting, okay. Go! So one nice thing about this stage for Samus is that the platforms on the sides kind of serve to protect her a little bit. Or it, I don't know. Dark Samus is a a life form It's uh, rather complicated. No, I'm not sure that you could gender it. But uh, regardless we've got uh platforms that can protect it <laughs> from uh, being approached in the air, which isn't exactly what uh, Little Mac's going to want to do. Excellent counter there from Little Mac, by the way. Ooh, that dash deck almost kills. Uh, well, Mac's got to be careful with that dash deck, because if he accidentally does that offstage, it's curtains. Blows the KO punch, and I don't think he can recover from this at all. So, Kevin... 
at this point, it's almost like he's baiting Tony into responding. With the, um, oops. <laughs> Takes a knee for, for his fallen self, I suppose. You know, the, the crouching over and over again, it's like... If I see an opponent doing that, my thought is I'm going to punish that, not I'm going to do that back and waste my respawn invincibility, you know? Alright. Kevin makes it back and then gets dash attack back off again. Very even so far on this game. Forward air takes him out off the side. And Kevin pulls into a narrow lead here, but ooh, that, that another dash attack is probably going to do it, depending on where it hits. Oh, that was a really risky option, and uh, Tony just misses on the execution with the upbeat. Unfortunate. It had a couple of opportunities there, I think, that would have definitely KO'd, but not hurting too much if he can finish it off soon. Oh, wow, I'm surprised that missed I thought that was going to be it. But Kevin's going to take that to the bank with a couple more a couple more hits. 25 more percent or something. That's not insignificant. Ooh, it's starting to really rack up for Tony here. Needs to get this finisher. There's so many moves that Mac has that'll do it. He just needs to hit something. Kevin's just in control right now. Ooh, dodges the KO punch. Double jab is all he needed to do it in the first place. And there's the crouching. Like, Tony putting himself in some bad positions by doing this back to him. And Kevin might be able to capitalize by just taking the game right then and there. So Kevin able to beat Tony. Maybe a little bit of uh, psychological warfare there. Getting in his head a little bit. Because uh, that definitely could have gone either way. And I think that there were some openings that Tony gave up that he really didn't have to. So, regardless, we're going to keep Kevin on being the winner of that match. And Zagreus is going to come on to replace Tony here. Well, we're going to try and keep Kevin on. Probably going to have to come back in. So we've reached that point in the bracket where you're on stream until you lose. It's only one match at a time going on for the rest of the event. Starting with losers semifinals, Kevin S versus Agrius. Winner of this will move on to losers finals, playing against Needs More Salt. And then Capped is waiting at the very top of that ladder in grand finals. So. These are the big ones. These are the final four. Waiting on some character choices and whatnot. The 
Bowser is incorrect there. I think that was Tony's character choice earlier, but I'm trying to remember what Zagreus was playing, and it's eluding me at the moment. Why can I not remember who Zagreus is playing? Somebody in the chat remind me. I've definitely scrolled by it like three times just looking at the list of characters. They're not another wolf, are they? Incineroar, you're right. Thank you. The purple cat versus the purple alien parasite inhabiting a human suit of armor. Welcome to Super Smash Brothers, where things like that happen. The luchador cat. It's, a, it's like the, the school mascot showing up to a wrestling match and just low-key being their top varsity wrestler in the suit. So we should be seeing them get started any second here. Both of them have had some pretty impressive runs to get here. Zagreus has spent three rounds in the loser's bracket, but has not lost a game yet in that loser's bracket. Kevin S making it all the way to winner's semifinals where they lost to Capt. So they have potential. They have not been tested against either Zagreus or needs more salt yet. Interesting, we got a villager coming out now instead of the Incineroar. Three, two, one, okay, go. here we go. Starting off on Final Destination. Both of them are going to like that for the projectile spam. No platforms that either of them will be able to use to get away from those things. It's kind of a question of who spams better. Players definitely pulling out the artillery, just firing away. So far, Kevin taking the worst of it. Um, I think based on how the projectile game has been going in this game one, if it continues as such, if he doesn't find an answer, Kevin might want to take things away from a stage where the projectiles can be flung so freely. Uh, might want to give himself some platforms, knowing that the villager is using this condition on the stage more successfully than his Dark Samus is. Just so much you've got to wade through to get to the villager on the other side. You've got to not get hit by slingshots, Lloyd rockets, the tree. Be landed on the tree instead of the character. Getting vulnerable here. Just getting a little bit overwhelmed. 
Good charge shot underneath the Lloyd rocket. Just gets slingshot into the face. Even with a helmet on, that's gotta hurt. And the back throw not gonna KO just yet. Gonna need to reinforce that uh, butterfly net just a little bit more. Probably was a little worried that it was gonna snap if he swung too hard around with it, you know? Gotta keep your tools in good shape. around the projectile walls here just not finding ko options and uh having a really hard time closing distance when they want to Ooh. almost lands that charge shot villager doesn't even try to pocket it just shields out of fear the dash attack will finally take it but kevin is down a full stock already so to figure out uh, a way to get some very safe damage. You don't want trades at this point. Mojo will take those all day. Great defense there coming out from Zagreus to get around that. up uh, threatening potentially to go in there with the aerial axe attack um, it is a very strong option of villagers um, sometimes they'll just put up a tree so they can gain access to the axe and not even worry about trying to use the tree for anything up he is going to get kevin back just barely but 113 percent you know damage has kind of been done at this point slingshot off the stage gonna do it Zagreus puts himself in a really good position to potentially advance. Kevin needs answers. We haven't seen any characters other than Dark Samus. This may be their main. This may be the best character they've got. So they need to find ways around what Villager is doing here. They need answers for their character. I think stage can definitely have a big impact here. Um, the projectiles that Kevin is putting out there are not really helping out against things like the slingshot, the Lloyd rocket. They don't have uh, a fast enough launch time to be able to stop all of that. So Kevin may be in, end up being the one who needs to play evasively and trying to close the distance. Not exactly what Dark Samus is meant to do. Oh, going for the Jigglypuff. Okay. Going for that aerial mobility. Going to try and kind of weave their way through in the air to make their way over to Zagreus. Three, two, one, go! This is interesting. And they put some, some platforms up there as well. Give themselves something to jump around on. Interesting game plan. Let's see how this works. Jigglypuff, very sticky. Uh, because she has that absurd aerial mobility that she's known for, she is just a balloon after all, um, she can kind of just hover right in the air where you don't want her to be. So even though she has relatively short range on her physical moves, her effective range from any point on the stage is a little bit better just because she can move herself to you so effectively. That's kind of how she'll work. Now Jigglypuff, not as strong in this game as she has been in some previous Smash games. Notably, you know, one of the best melee players in the world plays Jigglypuff. But uh, she hasn't been as strong since then. 
one of the things that got nerfed about her was her rest attack, which in some earlier games, you know, Smash 64 and Melee, extremely, extremely powerful. Could KO at like 30% against a lot of characters. But uh, much, it's, it's kind of just like a strong Smash attack in this game. It's uh, rarely worth going for. And the aerial mobility isn't quite as big of a deal in this game, where the game is just a little bit floatier already, so a lot of characters have that kind of mobility. Uh, and they didn't really speed her up in the air that much to where it's as much of a, a benefit to her, as much of an advantage over other characters as it used to be. Going for this uh, rest... Or not the rest, the sing. Um, trying to put Villager to sleep. If you do put up the shield, I guess that's a, a soundproof bubble that you get around yourself. Because you can shield the sing. Uh, it does not put you to sleep as long as you're just shielding next to it. And knowing that counterplay, it's going to be really hard for Kevin to set up that uh, sing into rest combo. Gets some good damage there, but does have to trade for it. Really like the aggression here. Zagreus uh, doing a good job, though, of trading back damage where he can and not getting completely overrun. Still putting out hitboxes for Puff to run into, and, you know, when Puff has to close the distance that hard to get to you, it's easy to get her to accidentally overcommit and run into something. Great Nair. Should be able to interfere with the edge guard. Unfortunately, chooses the wrong aerial for the job. Hits in the wrong direction. So good juke there by Zagreus. Ooh, tries to air dodge through it, and unfortunately the Lloyd Rocket's hitbox does go further back than they thought. That might actually do it. One more slingshot hit, and Kevin might be done for here. Needs to recover very carefully for the rest of this game. Oh, so much pressure. Oh, no, and the axe swing comes out just before the jab is able to from Kevin. We saw the animation start up, but it is not fast enough to interrupt that attack. Apologies for knocking things over. And it is 2-0 in Zagreus' favor for losers' semifinals. So... Zagreus will stay on. And now we get into best of five territory. Zagreus versus Needs Salt. So, Kevin S. out at a respectable... Changing rules, what? Let's smash again. All right, it... faking me out there a little bit, spooking me there. Like, wait, are they going to play another one? We, we can't have them play another one. <laughs> Kevin out at a very respectable fourth place. <laughs> Perfect, dunktastic. Um, so, shoutouts to Kevin S. for coming out and playing very well. Good tournament wins. Had some fun sets on stream with them. Next up, we're going to see Needs More Salt. That Ridley player that has been making short work of most of the bracket here today. These two will play for the right to compete against Capped in Grand Finals. So, loser of this gets third. Winner is guaranteed second. Do we know if there will be another Smash tournament? Let me look it up really quickly and see if there is anything on the books for us to run. Let's 
see. Today is September 18th. It looks like this might actually be the last one that's on the books for now. Yeah. Um, so this is the last event that we have on our calendar for you guys. We've, we've run a bunch of other stuff for you guys before. We had an Among Us event, event last month. We had a Mario Kart event before that. There was a Smash tournament in March. Um, so there's a bunch of stuff that we've run with you guys, and it looks like we're at the end of what is reserved so far. Um, so if you guys are interested in more, um, your, your college activities people are, of course, the people to go to to talk to about that. Um, they're the ones who have been in contact with us to bring us out. Of course, we would also encourage you guys to, you know, make your own clubs on campus. You definitely have a lot of people who are interested in playing this game. You know, 27 is huge. Uh, and I haven't heard anything about you guys even having an esports organization or anything like that where you guys are coming from. So definitely, you know, get together, share some friend codes, share some Discord usernames, and get something like that going on campus. They have weeklies? Okay, there you go. Um, so talk to Orboon Posk for more information about those uh, uh, weeklies. Because um, I sure don't know about them. <laughs> but uh, definitely check those out. It seems like you guys have a pretty good community going here. And uh, it's always fun to be a part of that. They do actually have an esports club on campus. All right. Um, I might get more information about that from our uh, student organizer here. Going to be having an esports facility built on campus soon. That's hype. Three, two, one. Well. Definitely keep an eye on those developments. It uh, looks like the school is definitely valuing the potential of esports for bringing people together, especially during quarantine time, and uh, making sure that uh, everybody is able to make some friends, not just you know the 15 players who are able to make it on the baseball team or whatever else you've got. It's one of the beauties of esports that. There isn't a bench. Everyone just plays because they've all got the equipment they need and you can create as many lobbies as you need. You're not limited by the physical space that you have to play in. All right, so Zagri is putting up a heck of a wall with this village. <laughs> Dropping a bowling ball on his head. Absolutely brutal. People say Ridley was supposed to be the monster here. I don't know. Villagers... Villagers doing some messed up things right now. Needs salt, though. Has not taken an awful lot of damage and has an edge guard position here. Goes for the forward smash. Doesn't get it, but is able to get a grab and put him back off stage. So, could definitely equalize in very short order here with the right hit. Dash attack. Fire breath. Charging a down smash. Again, hitting both of the uh, balloons there, but not hitting the uh, two frame yet. So, Need Salt has taken a little bit more damage here. Oh no, the tree hitbox actually hits down through the edge. Keeping Need Salt off and giving him an extra 80%. Oh my god, so much damage. All of a sudden, that's a three stock to one deficit. Zagri is just holding on to this stock for dear life and getting an entire stock lead from it. Needs Salt just having such a hard time finding this finisher. Finally does get it off stage with that up B move. But that's a lot later than they want to be getting it. Ooh, go up a little early and get hit with the Lloyd Rocket. Every bit of this damage hurts. Dash attack, a whole bunch of slingshots. So much that needs salt needs to weave through to get these hits and you know, going for the command grab. A little bit on the slow side. It's a lot of the options that he's trying don't seem to be well equipped to pin this villager down. Doesn't help that his character is such a big target, like we've mentioned before. You know, you throw a projectile out there. 
It's a lot easier to hit a Ridley than it is to hit a Pichu. Ooh, and the down air comes out. Mid percent two stock for Zagreus. Remember, this is best of five here, so Needs Salt does have an opportunity to take that loss and still have another game that they can lose before it's over. Still got some time, but we need to start coming up, coming up with some answers because that looked pretty dominant from the Villager. Needs some kind of a plan to weave around all of the projectiles, find themselves the hits that they need. Uh, or Boon Posk, the links will not work, but if you maybe DM that to me, I can put it in the announcements channel of the Discord server. So that'd be a great place for any of the participants at least to be able to see it. G Dog popping off for Zagreus here. Remember, G Dog earlier ha had the prediction that uh, Needs Salt was going to be the winner of the event. So, this would be an upset in their eyes. All right, awesome. I've just received a link to the Rowan Smash Ultimate Discord. So this is presumably where all of your weeklies and whatnot are coming from. I am posting this invite link in the announcements channel of the tournament Discord. So go and check that out if you're not already in there. You're gonna be getting access to all of these great players and more. And because I own the channel, I can put that inv invite link into the Twitch chat as well. So there you go. So if you're a Rowan University student and you want to be a part of the Smash events that are going on on their campus, get into that Discord that I just linked in the Twitch chat or in the announcements channel of the tournament Discord. Thank you for that, Orboon Posk. I still have no idea why your name is what it is or what it means. But you've been helpful today. Ready? Ooh, we've got a, a change in the face of the villager. He's a little bit more quaffed now. And then we've got a shirtless Sephiroth. Three, two, one, go! Man. Man's his eyes are dinner plates. He sees the muscles that they made up so they could put them on Sephiroth's chest. You ever notice that Sephiroth has got like this second pair of obliques? Like, I'm pretty sure it's a muscle that doesn't actually exist in human anatomy. Like, right under his armpits, just so that he can be even more buff. Need Salt still having a really hard time finding a way through the wall of villager aerials. It's a roll punished one winged angel. Oh no, villager just pocketed that. Is villager the most powerful being on the universe? Is he about to just throw this supernova back out and pop his shield and then drop a bowling ball? Oh my goodness. Cloud Strife, where are you at? We've found the ultimate life form. And he doesn't even have a name. He's just a villager. 
Whew. Explosion almost enough to finish the stock off. Lloyd Rocket blocks that one. Needs salt. It's a little bit of a poke with the forward air, but gonna need to take this stock right now. And then, okay, there it is. Does take it. But they're gonna need some really stellar play to be able to bring this back to where it's close. Some good nares. Coming out trying to hit the up smash there. Lands on top of the Lloyd rocket, and so they're going to get it popped off. And a lot of damage there, even if the bowling ball doesn't connect to the KO. So far, honestly, you know, the Need Salt has been playing this stock pretty well. has been keeping it pretty even. But they've just ended up in a position right now where even is not what they need. Get, get off the stage there. Ooh, and misses with the up tilt there. So that gives Need Salt a little bit more time to recollect himself. And there's the stock for Zagreus. Zagreus now up 2-0 in a best of five. So Needs Salt is going to need to win three straight in order to advance to grand finals. So hard to say if uh, the Sephiroth was giving them more of an advantage in the matchup than the Ridley was. We'll see what they opt to go for, both in terms of stage and for character. Because um, maybe there's some stuff you can do with the stage, but uh, I think part of it is just fundamentally needs Salt's going to need to dodge the uh, projectiles a little better. You need to find a way to deal with those so that they don't take so much damage and they can close the distance effectively with the villager here. Yeah, you know villager is bowling 300s. Definitely landing some strikes on Needs Assault in that last match. Ready? Piranha Plant. And we have the third different villager skin. Now we're on the default. Three, two, so let's see. I'm one, burning to fight. Go! Careful what you wish for. You are a very combustible creature. So far, pretty even. Um, needs Salt in a difficult position. Oh, Villager threw out the, the cloud back at him. I'm like, why is he getting damaged by his own? So it must have gotten pocketed earlier and I missed it. Gets a grab, yeets him off stage, tries to put the... Yeah, there it is. The the pocket on the cloud is what's happening there. So now Villager can use that against him. In his own edge guard situation. And I was surprised that they didn't trade or anything there, but the Lloyd Rocket will take out Needs Salt's first stock. Ooh, narrowly dodging that spike ball. That's very dangerous. And his shield is an M&M right now. It's so tiny. Oh, 
Claw tries to get the uh, spike ball up over the top, but just gets clipped. And Need Salt is able to keep it relatively even here. Has the Poison Cloud ready to go. In case he finds that to be useful. So far, a pretty good stock for Zagreus. Not an awful lot of uh, damage. Oh, goodness. <coughs> Not an awful lot of damage he's taken. And he's just slowly tagging on bits and pieces to need salt here. Ooh, that's a big hit. Keeps Villager off the stage for a little while. Oh, the spike ball is pocketed. I hope Need Salt noticed that. Whew, okay. Those bites are getting him a lot of mileage. It's just a lot of damage, and with how slow-paced the match has been, with how few real combos or follow-ups there have been, big hits like that make a big difference. Back to about even. Need Salt trying to find his way back on stage here. Been playing from the ledge an awful lot. And I feel like uh, Zagreus has really been able to take advantage of that. Just needs salt, just doesn't have the footing that he needs to land the moves that he's trying to hit with. Hits him with the upbeat on the way up and hits a spike ball as well. This is some crazy offstage play from Needs Salt. Just trying to play the entire match from right here, but the spike ball gets thrown right back at him. Okay. Good shielding from Zagreus. You know, a lot of those big projectiles he's just been on the defense already for. Good reactions. Spike ball pocketed. Throws it the other way. Tries to bowling ball him. Off stage to stop the Lloyd Rocket. Zagreus has just been really resilient to all of these edge guard attempts so far. Big fight. All right, Need Salt is still in this. But they need to not get hit by a bowling ball in the face. Zagreus wins 3 0 in Losers Finals and will advance to Grands. Wow, congratulations to Zagreus, because that's a huge loser's run that they've been able to make so far. So, like, to, to rewind for a second, Zagreus got knocked into losers in winner's round three by capped. So, to get here, they've had to play Roku D1, GG, Legends, Kevin S, and now needs more salt. And they have won all of those matches en route to making it up to play against capped. Huge win for them. Yeah, and that last match was pretty close. So close you got me. I'll try harder next time. Very communicative, this needs salt. Zagreus has a fan now in the audience. We got G-Dog popping off for them. Villager killing it. And it's interesting because they weren't playing the villager, at least in the stream matches that we saw up until that last match. It seems like maybe they're like, okay, the villager's kind of popping off right now. Maybe we just sit on it. Maybe we just keep doing this. All right. Let's bring the captain in here. I don't know if that's what it's short for, but it sounds cool, right? I think so. This will be Grand Finals. So as we have indicated on the top of the screen, remember this is a double elimination bracket, meaning that Zagreus has lost once already. And so if they lose one set, it's over. Capped, though, has only just gotten here from the winner's side. They have not lost anything yet. Because they haven't lost yet, they still do need to lose twice to be out of the bracket. 
So if set one does go to Zagreus, we just reset and do another best of five. So this is a potential 10 game set if it goes to last game every single time. Be really exciting if that did happen, but uh, I believe Capt was the one who sent Zagreus into losers. Yeah, 2 0. So if you're the betting type out there, you're probably putting more of your money on Capt. Thing is, Capt has been sitting for an awful long time. Probably since like Losers Top 8 started, Capt has just not had matches to play. in here. I don't know that they noticed. Yeah, I wouldn't blame Capt for uh, being away from the computer a little bit. <laughs> it's been been a wait for him for sure. Um, that's just kind of ha what happens when you win all of your matches. The time that it takes the loser's bracket to sort itself out, the uh, winner can often get a little cold. Um, okay, there they are. So... Now that they've made it in here, we'll see what kind of condition they're in. Zagreus, meanwhile, you know, hot on the heels of, what, five wins in a row, we just said? There's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five wins in a row to get to this point. So their confidence is probably doing pretty well right now. Let's see what answers they can come up with for the Falco, presumably, that put them into losers in the first place. Making their initial selections here for the first game of Grand Finals. Here we go. This is it. Set one grand finals. Got the Incineroar back out now. Three, two, one, go! The Fire Cat. Interesting. They're both playing the orange color. Might get into some scramble situations where it's tough to tell who's who. So far, it's all capped. Completely in control for all of that first stock. Only got capped once. Over commits with the dash attack. Don't get punished for that. Capped. Stuck in an awkward spot. 
after the follow-up ends, but able to regain control. So much pressure on the ledge here from this Falco. It catches him out with a forward air. Right, a little bit of a party starter for Zagreus there, but he wasn't able to follow it up. Goes him off stage. Wow, so much power behind these attacks from Incineroar. That one didn't KO. Definitely getting close to it. It's forward air. Trying to get that drop kick. Well, the trade's still going to go in Cap's favor. 65%, not the end of the world, but uh, definitely something that you need to make up at this point if you're Zagreus. Be able to get back into this game. Larry a little bit too predictable. Oh, there's a grab off of the, the side B. First time we've seen someone punish that from Capped in a while here. Oh man, such a weird angle that they got sent at there because of the way they interacted with the stage. And so now 68%, you know, that's definitely not KO range yet. Um, Capt is going to have some time to tack on a little bit of percent here. That he is doing. What a combo. Good reversal there to get out of it by Zagreus, but it takes a lot of percent for that. Zagreus trying to get it looked like the uh, counter into play here. Try and charge up that uh, revenge. But. Ooh. Almost does it there. And I think he just recovered too far away. No, no, he's fine. Woo! I'm surprised the side B didn't hit. Down tilt. Up air is not going to do it. the lariat out just needs to get this stock finally gets the uh, down smash two frame but beautiful patience on the part of capped following the role not committing until zagreus committed to something himself follows him with the up smash and takes the stock to win game one of set one of grand finals So both stepping out here. Seems like the stage selection has been made. Capt is back in. Zagreus is back in. Same characters. Let's see where they're going. Small battlefield, small battlefield. So... I think part of what uh, Zagreus is going for here is the smaller blast zones. You know, with Incineroar, like we've mentioned before, lots of KO throws, and uh, being able to access those KO throws earlier because they're going to KO earlier, um, definitely a big advantage. Go for a couple of up airs there. I think it's something that Zagreus has been struggling to do with this character is link attacks one into the other. Um, they've gotten a lot of stray hits. Part of that is Incineroar's mobility, but I have to think that uh, there's a little bit more capacity in the character for strings, in the air especially, than uh, we've been seeing. Playing it super safe. Cap's trying to play really scary and intimidate him into running into an up smash. Ooh. That's going to be a shield grab. 
Tries to go for the two frames of the down smash a little bit early, and it is, does get punished. So Zagreus out to a narrow early lead. Good roll up. I like how they're both being patient here. Um, but uh, Capt is, you know, expecting uh, Zagreus to get overwhelmed and try and overcommit to something because he gets scared. And Zagreus really really isn't falling for it and is often able to actually capitalize on that patience. Able to take advantage of the time that he's being given. Oof. Goes in for a counter that was a little bit early and out of position and it takes a lot of percent for doing so. Nevertheless, still in control. Still a very even game. <laughs> Spooky there. Cap hits that back air. That's going to stage spike. I'm going to need a ledge tech that. Cap combo puts Falco off stage, but no edge guard because Cinderella is just not fast enough to get there. Ooh, I like the jab, but. Uh, Smash was a little reactable there. Cap's gonna get back for free. Oh, that's so scary. Big up smash though, and that will do it. So Zagreus maintaining that narrow lead and getting a nice grab. 25 whole percent off of that. This is looking like it could be Zagreus's game here. Okay, good patience from Capped there, waiting out the uh, spot dodge, being able to just charge that smash attack. You know, that's that patience that Zagreus was anticipating before, but you know, when you're at high percent, you start to get a little bit antsy. Oh man, that could be big damage. All right, he's out with only 36. That's better than it could have been. Great Nair out of shield. Oh, and Zagreus might actually have done it. Not quite. So close. Oh, and he goes for the big smash attack, and that's going to get punished a little bit. Let's see what Cap can do with it. Both of them in his own a little bit. Does that get the stock? No, not quite. We got a double false cutscene there. Sometimes the game can be mis misleading. It doesn't actually uh, quite accurately calculate whether the player is going to survive. Woo! Third time's the charm, though. Zagreus is on the board for the first time all tournament against Capt. It is one to one in set one of the grand finals. A lot of people like to talk about how game three is really key for momentum in a set like this. Um, I think, obviously, the first game is probably the most important because it determines who's going to have counter pick advantage for the rest of the set. But at this point, you know, whoever wins this has to win one game, whereas the other player has to win two in a row. Um, so that can make it a lot easier for the player with the advantage. They got a little bit of a cushion at that point. Ready? Looks like they're sticking to their characters. Unless there's a switch coming out from Zagreus. Ready? Nope. Might have just had the stage wrong. Three, two, one, there we go. 
go. Zagri is playing a really safe zoning game. Goes in, gets man grab. So he's trying to get the offense going. Get in there with side bees and whatnot. Not quite landing anything yet. Ooh, that's a good start. Able to keep the offense going. Hits him down with the side B. Ooh, nice forward air to catch the recovery out. That might KO. It does. Beautiful edge guard by Cat. Just had control the entire sequence there. That's the benefit of positional advantage. Even if you don't have your opponent in what's a guaranteed combo, if they don't have a lot of options in neutral, you've still kind of won that interaction. Actually gets turned around there, so the jabs don't go the right way, and uh, Zagreus is given some breathing room. But, okay, there's the up smash. Zagreus not going to go down without a fight in this one. Still has some damage to make up, but when you're on the same stock, anything can happen. Ooh, yeah, that's that's going to land on stage, unfortunately, and Cap is ready to punish that with two big bird fists. Wings, I don't know. That's so much damage. Not going to go for the aggressive up B. Like, Zagreus is definitely going to be ready for that with a punish. And is that it? Oh my god, straight to the right. No DI. I if there was DI, it didn't matter. Capped just speed running that third game there. I'm curious if Zagreus pulls out the villager. It might be that he doesn't want to because of the shine or something. Worried about something getting reflected back at him. Now you can re reflect the tree when it gets chopped down. Like there's a lot that Falco can send back at you, but uh, it's not the fastest reflect animation either. He has to kick it all the way out there and bring it all the way back before he can do anything. So might still be able to overwhelm him with projectiles if he just avoids the reflected ones. Curious to see whether he sticks to his guns here. Definitely some thinking going into this. This is what could potentially be the deciding game of the tournament. Capped is on two tournament tournament games here. Tournament points. Capped is all ready to go. No reason to try anything other than that Falco that's been working so far for him. Ready? And we go back to the purple Incineroar. Important strategic decision there. Lilat. All right, one, interesting. Go! So. Stage, uh... It plays very well for characters that want to stay on the ground because they have so much cover from the platforms above them. 
It's really hard to approach from the air against that. And it also sets up really well for characters with disjointed hitboxes to hit you from underneath. So far, fantastic play from Zagreus, maintaining control and keeping this advantage state going. Still has center stage, even though they got hit out of it. See there, you know. If you have stage position, a lot of the time your opponent feels pressured to have to contest center stage. Sometimes they're going to overcommit something like the dash attack we saw. So, so Right now, uh, Cap has kind of got his feet back on the ground. The trade will even things out. Very close so far. Both players getting some opportunities. So with the damage output that Incineroar has off a single opening. Goodbye, Birdie. That's some good damage off of a single hit there. This is looking a lot more like that uh, second game that uh, Zagreus was able to take. He's slowing the pace down. He's making Falco kind of run at him and being able to react well and take advantage of any overcommitments with big punishes. That grab. Not going to KO. That is, though, two stocks up for Zagreus right now. He's running away with this right now. Not to mention having Rage, you know. That can be huge for Incineroar with those kill throws. He's got Rage and his Revenge uh, Charge. One of those grabs is going to KO early. Good patience on the ledge there. Oh, this back throw might kill? Not quite. <laughs> Forgot he didn't have Revenge charged up. He needs to hit that counter first. But man, this is looking hard for Cap to win right now. And there it is. That's just going to clank and beat Falco going for, I think it was a forward tilt or something. And Zagreus taking us to game five of set one here. Reset point and tournament point. Now, the big advantage I think the captain is going to have going into this fifth game is the stage choice. Because um, I think it's a very particular kind of stage that has enabled Zagreus to be playing the game that he's playing there. Um, lots of, you know, relatively small stages with platforms where uh, it's a little bit more difficult for Falco to keep his distance and pick his openings. Uh, Zagreus is able to just kind of run him down with that Incineroar and get on top of him. Uh, it's a lot harder on those stages that he's won on so far for Capped to get out of the way. Needs Salt is calling for a reset. They want to see even more Smash Ultimate. Looks like they're locked in. Probably sticking to the Falco. We'll see if there are any last-minute changes here from, from Zagreus. This might be a situation where the Villager actually helps. Ready? Nope, going to the Incineroar. Just going to stick to it, try to win with it. Already won twice. Let's see if we can make it a third. Final destination. Could be the final destination. Maybe, maybe there's some head games being played there. No platforms to work with. Falco's going to have all of that airspace above Incineroar to approach. But it's 
It's also not the hardest thing for Incineroar to stay grounded here. Ooh, this is a tough spot to get out of. Good recovery there. Great job playing defense there from Zagreus. Getting out of that. Has the revenge charged. You gotta watch out for these grabs now. I really like the use of the uh, neutral airs out of shield here from Zagreus. Keeping Capped honest. Whenever he overcommits. Anybody's game. What? Weak hit sends him over to the left side. Instead of spiking. This is it. That KOs every day of the week. Saturday through Saturday. Zagreus looking like he can get this reset. It's going to be close, though. Capped definitely keeping it within range. Oh, and this combo is potentially big. Be able to punish out of that. Up smash into neutral air. Good damage. I was surprised there was no uh, back throw there. I was thinking put the Falco off stage in that situation. The air dodge is read there by Capped, followed it effectively. They're so close. Oof. Trades with the back air. Ooh, the down smash puts him off the stage. Goes all the way off for the forward air. Doesn't get it. Zagreus is back on stage and feeling fine. Gets a neutral air. This stock is so huge because it determines who has momentum going into the last one. They trade! Oh my god! It's dead even. Zero to zero. They don't even have an invincibility advantage off the respawn platform. They're going right into it and Capt has control the whole time. The Nair doesn't even interrupt it. The jab comes through 50% right off the bat. It's a great start for Capt. He wants to just shut this down right now. Oh, but the crab off stage doesn't get the smash attack charged in time, and Capt is able to chase with the side B. So Zagreus at the biggest deficit he's been at the entire game so far. He needs to slow things down, get them back under control. That's a big overcommitment on that dash attack. Oh no, and he held down. He didn't grab the ledge. And Zagreus unable to recover. Giving capped. Game three. Winning the tournament in set five of... Or game five of set one of grand finals. Absolutely insane last game there. Oh my god, the way that that trade went. I was losing my mind. Fantastic play from both players. A very entertaining set to watch. Congratulations to Capt for the win, but also congrats to Zagreus on second place. Congrats to Need More Salt for the bronze. A great tournament that we got to watch here from Rowan University. And thank you to everybody else for showing up, even if you didn't play at all just for being here and supporting the event all the way through to the end. We really appreciate having you guys here. It makes the, the ending so much more exciting to watch. Appreciate all of y'all who came out to support your friends, to compete with each other, to meet some new people. That's exactly the spirit of the Smash community. Like we said before, if you're looking for more Smash events at your school, you have a local community. I've just shared the Discord channel there. So that's one place you can go. We at Bravis have a community Discord where people from all sorts of different schools that have competed in all of our different events can go to meet each other and play maybe with people you might not have known from outside the, uh, the state that you're in or the region you're in, but uh, who would be good you know, fits for you as training partners and whatnot. So there's that opportunity as well, maybe to meet some people who play other games as well. Shoutouts to The Shop, S-H-O-P, your on-campus uh, 
your on-campus food bank. Um, they are the, the beneficiaries of this event today. And we really appreciate having them on and their support for this event. And lastly, thank you on behalf of Bravis. Um, Bravis Esports is an organization dedicated to trying to build esports communities wherever we find them, whether that be in schools, parks and rec departments, businesses. We do tournaments, we do leagues, we do all sorts of different events, and we appreciate you guys being part of this one. So thank you for watching. If you want more from Bravis, we do a platform fighter show on Thursdays. I do Squid School, which is a Splatoon learning opportunity on Tuesdays. Uh, and there is a MOBA show on Wednesdays. Play a lot of League of Legends there. So if any of that sounds interesting, you can follow this channel and find more of us from there. That's going to be it for the event. Thank you to Rowan University for having us out. We really appreciate you guys. And thank you to all of you for showing up and being such a great audience. We'll see you next time.